Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday, the 30th day of July. We're now going to be more than halfway into the year. Just incredible. Final hours of July here in the next two days. We're going to be here for the next three hours. Larry Pratt was on the nightly news last Friday and said, yeah, a lot of evidence that the shooting in Colorado was an inside job. And uh, you notice that the mainstream corporate media, the dying dinosaur Decepticon media, hasn't even attacked him for that. Because they don't want people looking at that. In fact, it was admitted a week ago that the uh, supposed shooter, Mr. The Ronald McDonald Patsy, uh, the uh, as he's known by our listeners, who's obviously drugged out of his gourd when he's in court. It came out uh, that, uh, well, basically, we're going to be breaking it all down uh, here today with Larry Pratt, all the different inconsistencies, the issues with it. But that's not going to be the main reason Larry Pratt joins us. Coming up today, we're going to be getting into something that's getting zero coverage, basically. I mean, it's in a few newspapers, but it it should be getting massive coverage. Democratic senators offer gun control amendment for cybersecurity bill. That's the Hill newspaper. And I've got a copy of the bill here with me, S-32, the cybersecurity bill that's very close to passing. And the usual suspect, Chucky e. Schumer wants us all to live in the type of hell that he's in control of with his armed guards, with everybody else disarmed there in the nanny state of New York. Well, now Chucky e. Schumer uh, has introduced this, and, uh, well, it says it will ban all clips 10 rounds and above. And I don't mean for manufacturer sale. It says from possession. And it, and it describes banning devices that can take the clips. So that's most guns. And we saw the ATF last year come out with a rulemaking without law and said, we, we think we'll ban most shotguns over 60% if they can take a clip or a barrel. And of course, you know, Scalia uh, has said, well, it's reasonable. Yeah, you got a second amendment, basically a right to turn those guns in. That's what they said four years ago. I warned everybody about that Supreme Court ruling. I said, hey, it says right here, you got a right, but that they can restrict it. You know, that there can be reasonable restrictions as the government arms the teeth against us. And we got Bill Crystal, we've got uh, Rupert Murdoch. The list goes on and on saying, yeah, it's reasonable. You don't need semi-auto. You don't need that. And then Michael Moore's like, you ban everything down to flintlocks. And Bloomberg goes further. He says, no, just have the police stand down. So we're going to spend a lot of time on this today. And we're going to have Larry Pratt uh, popping in at the start of the third hour today. And then we have a uh, fellow who's done reporting for us in the past who was in Chicago and showed TSA on the streets. Uh, and, you know, they're at the bus terminal and the train stations. They're all over the country now. And it, it went on the web. It, it got quite a bit of attention. And so the next time he was there, they came to him when he was at a snack shop, a little, you know, little restaurant there uh, at the subway, I guess. And threatened him with terrorism. They said, it's terrorism to film us. And he said, I've got the First Amendment. And they kind of scurry off after a while after threatening him. But this is the new America. And we are in the hands of just lawless, out-of-control miscreants who lust after power because they're nobodies. They have no success. No one wants to associate with them. Uh, this is the government class. This is a bunch of failures telling us to salute them and bow down to them occupying our country. And God help us because we're in very, very deep and dire straits right now. Uh, we have a huge radio broadcast line today on so many fronts. Hey, did you hear the Penn State uh, head who was ousted for the cover-up at Penn State? Well, they've got a new job in Homeland Security in the NSA watching us. Oh, yeah, he's going up to the big leagues after job well done. Coming up later in the third hour today, Julio Rosseo, who's done some reporting off and on 
for InfoWars.com is going to be joining us. A dramatic video that we showed on the nightly news uh, with Luke Radowski on Friday of TSA setting up checkpoints inside Chicago and then coming over to Julio and saying, you're a terrorist if you tape us. Uh, don't you dare tape us. And they're announcing not just face scanning cameras and license plate reading cameras, but listening devices all over New York run by the control freak in chief, Mayor Bloomberg. We're going to be going over all that. Big Sis told us what was already in Homeland Security documents since 2009. Indeed, they are surveilling us with drones for, quote, public safety. You know, when the cops pull you over, they say it's public safety. When uh, you know, the TSA uh, goes uh, you know, bobbing for apples in your, in your underwear, uh, they are doing it for your safety. When they put cancer viruses in your vaccines, uh, it's for your safety. When they uh, nerve gas our own troops in thousands of tests and kill them and dissect their bodies, it's for your safety. Uh, when Jerry Sandusky raped children brutally, uh, it was for your safety. When the college covered it up, it was for your safety. When Hitler lined people up and shot them, uh, it was for their safety. Um, everything these scumbag, out-of-control tyrants do is for your safety. And I just lost power in here. Are we uh, still on air? Okay, good. Okay, fantastic. Well, that's good. Something, I, I guess the lights just went out uh, for our safety. Uh, but continuing, now the article I want is red linked. It's in the uh, features. Um, it's in the features. Because this isn't it. it, it it's, it, it's the UN treaty would use foreign troops inside America. We covered it Friday, but I want to cover it more today. It's red linked in the tiles. That's the article. That's it. All right, continuing uh, here, ladies and gentlemen, with the news. You know, I'm going to get into the whole gun situation because it's dire straits. They've come out and announced that uh, how guns won on the cover of Time. I talked a lot about this yesterday on the Sunday show. Uh, th this signals a major counteroffensive against us, so get ready. And they will try to march the police out to confiscate the guns, and they think they can get away with it. Uh, and basically start a civil war uh, in this country. Now, I want to go over the other news before I get into uh, all of this incredibly important information. You know, I heard local talk radio this morning you know, basically saying, oh, yeah, I guess we're going to have to have security in the theaters now because of the epidemic of shootings. And I tried to call into the show to say, you know, the Justice Department says there's been a 0.1% increase since 1992, in, in, in 20 years, a 0.1% increase in shootings of more than five people at one time. So basically, it's flat. It had actually gone down some in the mid-2000s. I follow those numbers. They said, N -n -n you know, no thanks, we don't want to he uh, hear that. They were also b bumbling around talking about, um, you know, was this guy on psychotropics or not? Uh, well... The supposed shooter, who everybody's already convicted, Mr. Ronald McDonald, uh, it's come out that he was on a bunch of drugs. That's been in the Denver uh, Post. It's been in uh, the Daily Mail. He had a former head Air Force psychiatrist, the head of the entire San Antonio operation before she went to work there uh, at the facility where he was at uh, there in Denver at that college. She had been reprimanded for over-prescribing and improperly prescribing psychotropics and antipsychotics. But you can never blame that, even though it's the case in almost every case. You know, the guy that just shot a cop for no reason at a Walmart here in Austin, I said, he'll be on psychotropics, and it came out he was. Uh, Sergeant Bales shooting all the people. Turned out he was under psychiatric care, had part of his foot blown off, didn't want to go back. They hopped him up on a bunch of serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And they sent him back into there. Not a good idea to give somebody a dream state hallucinogen, psychotropic. That's what they are. They just more heavily induce you into the dream state. That's what Prozac basically feels like for people that have taken it. Is like you've been watching TV for four hours and you have that mind-numbed you know, feeling interface with the television. That's what the system wants. That's what they're after. Now, here's the big red alert. 
because I listened to talk radio, national and local, from early this morning, and no one was talking about it. It's nowhere in the news except the Hill newspaper, Fox News, and AP have little blurbs about it. Uh, the Drudge Report, uh, DrudgeReport.com linked to it, Infowars.com linked to it. But it's basically getting no coverage, despite that. Now, remember, we're conspiracy theorists to think that they might want to take our Second Amendment. They have introduced legislation that bans semi-auto and bans clips above 10 rounds and bans guns that can take clips. It says devices and the clips. Okay, I've read the bill. You can go read the bill. Uh, here is uh, the Hill newspaper, Democratic Senators Offer Gun Control Amendment for Cybersecurity Bill. Now, this has a chance of passing. Just like NDAA did and just like government health care did. This is the season where they want to get stuff done. That's why you've got all these top Republicans coming out and endorsing, restricting the Second Amendment. So I'm going to break all this down in about 20 minutes after I get to some of the other news. But I've got to cover some of the other news before I get into this central issue. But the criminal class knows that we're waking up and they're coming at us from every angle. And that's the bottom line. Um... This, again, proves wherever they're in control, Chicago, New York, wherever this globalist mafia is in control, there's a total gun ban for the citizens, and the governing class all have semi-auto, full-auto bodyguards paid for by taxpayers. Or there's waivers so Donald Trump can have guys with submachine guns. But you and your mother, your wife, your daughter, your son, they get to get mugged, raped, and killed, and then it's no big deal. Hell, a lot of times it's by the police in New York, the biggest street gang in the world who wants you to know they're a street gang. And there's just constant movies, Batman, Spider-Man, you name it, where we do nothing but worship the NYPD. Well, if that's the model of worship, look out. Are there some really professional, good police forces in this country? Yes. Who haven't succumbed to total criminality? Yes. But more and more, they are totally becoming nothing but warlord uh, systems and, 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 and mafia jokes. And America knows that. Yes, we are winning the gun debate. It's true what Time Magazine says with horror. We're winning the hearts and minds. But the system doesn't care. That's the bad news. They're going ahead with all this. So I'm going to, I'm already starting to cover this. The point is, there is legislation introduced, the cybersecurity bill that guts the internet and free speech and the rest of it. That says it wants reasonable gun control. And it says SA2575 would make it illegal to transfer or possess, possess large capacity feeding devices such as gun magazines, belts, feed straps, and drums of more than 10 rounds of ammunition. There you go. And I've read the bill itself. No one's even picking up on this the way I read it is that it bans, just like the ATF wanted to do last year, guns that could take, quote, improvise. If you could build something, it's banned. Basically, bottom loading, side loading. Uh, you know, this is taking you to bolt action and single shot. I'm going to say that again. They're telling you, don't worry, it's a conspiracy theory. We don't want your guns. You see that all the time. Don't run, we are your friends. You know, this is not an assault. Ted Offensive, you know, it's the Chinese New Year. Uh, you know, everybody's fine, boom, they launched the attack, and they broadcast, this is not an attack. A lot of people just stood there while they were being, you know, bayoneted at point-blank range because it was a holiday, it couldn't be an attack. And again, this really works on people. They announce everywhere, oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, I saw dozens of articles last week, Washington Post, you name it. There's no, we don't want your guns. Obama isn't going to call for it. Meanwhile, all his surrogates were, and he came out and said, I'm not calling to control your guns. See, it's all mind games. You got a Second Amendment. You got a right to anything that isn't semi-auto. What Michael Moore say? He said, ban it down to flintlocks. What does Bloomberg say? Ban them all. What does uh, Bill Crystal say on Fox? Ban everything semi-auto. What does Rupert Murdoch say? Hey, you don't need semi-auto. What has Mitt Romney said in the past? Folks, it's a talking point. They mean business. Business, business, business. And you're like, well, America won't turn them in. You know, people are going to fight back. Uh, that's the plan. They're looking at it, and they're gauging the police with NSA technology, spying on them, tracking them. They've got their agents everywhere. They're gauging the, the, the public sample rate. They admit they're doing this, spying on everything. because It's about those aggregates to not just spy on one person. They want to be able to look at whole movements and ideas in graphs that they can drill down into. This is all admitted. Makes, you know, Google Analytics look like a 
toy, because it is just the NSA toy they've given the public. They have profiles on each person down to just incredible specifics. Uh, it's incredible. And they're there gauging right now with their finger on the trigger to stage a bunch of new mass shootings, launch a new war, and announce, hey, you got your Second Amendment, turn in everything that's semi-auto. And it is meant to cause a civil war. That's why they're gearing up. It, 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 we've been telling you for a couple of years, they're gearing up for an October surprise. Does that mean they're going to do it? No, we're exposing it. It may not. But uh, it's now being reported that uh, DHS prepares for civil unrest as Obama poised to destroy the Second Amendment. They're announcing, yes, the 30,000 drones are public safety. Arde Saveda wanted to buy this ridiculously expensive helicopter knowing it would get shot down. And now they're, it's okay. We're going to get federal grants for drones in Austin. South Texas is getting them with shotguns mounted on them. It's on, folks. This is what they plan to try to ferret people out of their houses that don't turn their guns in. As if, if you start this civil war, as if people are going to sit in their houses and just wait for you to come get them. I mean, again, I, <laughs> you know why they've said all these years the, the, the veterans are the terrorists and tell police you're going to have to fight veterans? Because they know... Probably 5% of gun owners, being conservative, are not going to turn them in. And that's millions of people. And they know the number one group to worry about is veterans. So uh, look out. This is a criminal banking takeover that wants to start a civil war between the military and police against the American people. They are completely ruthless and they see all of us as animals, as mindless prey who are here to be lied to, sucked off of, run over, and finally killed. They've hardened their heart against us. And it's time to admit how much trouble this country and the world is if we have any hope of defeating these people. Now, they are losing the moral authority rapidly, and that's what makes them so dangerous. They realize they've reached the tipping point where the entire public is not becoming conservative, because that's a catch-all name, but are becoming constitutionalist and street smart and wise. The public knows you can't trust the government. They know the government can't and won't protect you. That's why gun sales were at an all-time high last month before this month's staged event. And now the gun sales have doubled in the week after. The polls, I covered this yesterday, got even more pro-gun nationwide after the shooting. Look, it doesn't matter how much stuff you stage. Don't you get it, criminals? We know who you are. We see you. We see you. We've caught you. The con games don't work anymore. And you can point at 30, 40% of people that don't know their name or which end is up that are TV heads. We're not talking about the drooling group, okay? A large portion of the American people becoming a majority is somewhat awake. The numbers show it across the board. That's why you're on the cover. I just got chills. That's why you're on the cover of Time Magazine saying we've won, how guns won, why Americans have turned against gun control by Joel Klein. But Joe has got a plan to get our guns. And let me tell you, just because, hey, the Bolsheviks weren't popular when they took over in 1917. They might have had maybe 10% support. They didn't care. They were willing to take over. They were willing Okay, but now these type of folks are in control of the government. And so what can they do? They can rob and destroy the economy. They can shut down our power plants nationwide. They can attack families everywhere. They can raise all these taxes. They can pass laws with tax incentives to move stuff offshore. They can pay $22 billion to ship General Motors to China. They're doing everything they can to wreck this country. That's the bad news. We're awake to them. And they're like, oh, you're awake and going to kick us out? We're going to burn your country down. And here's the deal. They were already busy burning it down. But now they've just started throwing gasoline on it because they want to make you totally dependent on them. They're in a race. That's why in Oregon they've announced you can't have your own garden and use rainwater. That belongs to the government. They're announcing horticulture is illegal. You're like, really? Yeah, look it up. It's mainstream news. I'm telling you, folks, it's going to get... It, the tyrants, as they know that they're about to be overthrown, are going to get crazier and more in your face, like a pimp punching us in the nose, going, you're going to get out there and do what I say. Do you understand? And we're like, no, we don't.
Go ahead and call us terrorists. We know who the real terrorists are. It's you. When the TSA marches up on the streets of Chicago or L.A. and says, turn your cameras off, or you're a terrorist. And then have the nerve to find out who the reporter is once it goes on the web and come find them. We've got the reporter on the last 30 minutes in Chicago. He got it on tape coming up threatening him. What happened to Luke Radowski so many years ago? One of our great uh, you know, reporters at the time. What happened to him? He's out in front of Building 7 protesting the fact that it was clearly controlled demolition. And these security guards come over across the street. And Luke even jumped through hoops to get his little permit. And they go, you need to get you out of the heat. Something bad's going to happen to you. You're going to say you're a terrorist, literally like the Godfather. And you're going to be 30 days in the hole. I know you're not a terrorist, but I'm going to say your Cameron stuff's a bomb. <laughs> Luke actually laughed like that while smoking a pipe. About 30 cops show up. The, the, the Larry Silverstein security detail that looked like central casting literally out of the Sopranos goes, uh, I think uh, the camera's a bum. And they, uh, you know, I mean, like a Bugs Bunny cartoon with gangsters. You know, those, the, the Bugs Bunny characters where he's fighting the gangsters, literally talking like that. It's in my film, Truth Rising. And the police grab Luke's camera. Now, they didn't get the other camera across the street, and they, and, and, and they gave the camera back after he agreed to leave. And the cops said, we're going to put you in jail for terrorism. I mean, he's like, but I'm not a terrorist. And they go, we know, but it's our city now. You understand? See, they did 9-11, folks, and they all know it full well. We'll be right back with the News Blitz, I promise. Stay with us. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give the number out. And then after I go through some of the headlines, we're going to open the phones up. But I specifically want to hear from you. Are you hearing other talk radio or national news talk about they're very close to passing the Cybersecurity Act? They've been trying to pass for several years. And it's got a ban of all high-capacity magazines, the possession of them. And the way I read the bill, it could be interpreted in the rulemaking of the ATF, the guns that take the mags. I mean, this is in the Hill newspaper, AP, a few others, but that's it. And, and, and I listen to talk radio, and it's, it's really bizarre how these people get their talking points, I guess, from Rupert Murdoch and Bill Kristol and uh, Scalia, because they're suddenly, because it's not Democrats calling for gun control. On the news, it's the Republicans going, well, yeah, you could restrict guns. Yeah, come on, let's ban you don't need semi-auto for duck hunting, ban it. It's time to turn them in. And the talk show hosts go, oh, well, that's a change in the weather vein. I better just go ahead and see. It's that wild card of suddenly having the people they love. Oh, Bill Crystal's my friend. Oh, Rupert Murdoch's my friend. Oh, Mitt Romney. Yeah, he wanted to ban all semi-autos as governor of Massachusetts, but it's okay. I'm going to be getting into that after we get to your calls. I'm going to get into the details of it. Because I want to just give a hardcore focus, like 10-minute report. I'll do it at, say, 10, 10 after or so uh, next hour. Because there's a bunch of it, and I want to go over it. I want to play the Scalia clip. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. i got to get it all together for the nightly news, too. All the clips of them calling to turn our guns in and how great it is. And cutting in Bill Crystal's comments and uh, the comments by Rupert Murdoch with Michael Moore and Bloomberg on Piers Morgan. I mean, it's exactly the same crud. And it really shows us how much trouble we're in. It's because America's waking up. It's because we're becoming a total gun culture. That they're hyping the end of the world statistically. And Kurt did a story um, yesterday titled, Establishment Circles the Wagons on Gun Control. And in it, he found the Justice Department numbers. Since 1992, guess how much of an increase there's been in mass shootings? in five or more people involved. Guess how much? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So there has been an increase. 0 0.1. And that's with advertising it and all the shoot 'em up games. And of course, this guy was on a bunch of drugs and he was going to some weird top Air Force scientist and he was in a brain program. I mean, I've seen this over and over again. That's why even Larry Pratt's like, yeah, it's probably staged. Of course it is. The guy's so drugged up, he can't even talk. And I said I get to the other news. It's just incredible. Here's the toll-free number, 800-259-9231. Is anybody concerned that 
They've introduced legislation to ban most guns and magazines. And that the UN's own official treaty said in Article 15, we will, we will aid other states in their internal gun confiscation. I mean, this is big. They're admitting they're going to do internal gun confiscation. They're admitting that they want to ban our guns in this bill. They're out there saying ban everything down to flintlocks. And, and the conservatives, the so-called conservatives, now uh, we're just going to ban semi-auto, not, not down to flintlocks. And, and this article talks about how the gunpowder is really explosives and we need to get rid of regular, you know, smokeless gunpowder. I mean, it, it is just an all-out hysteria while here's the key while the power structure arms to the teeth against us we have the power structure arming to the teeth against us with high-tech weapons i mean i saw an article two weeks ago where the army's deploying on the streets with a plasma laser beam that fires a laser beam at you that can burn you. But then through the laser beam, it's a particle weapon. They conduct a lightning bolt and just blow you to pieces. Literally, don't run, we are your friends, and it disintegrates you. You explode like an oak tree hit by a bolt of lightning. And drones and weapons and space scanning cameras and NSA spying on us while the borders are wide open and they legalize the illegals. Just trees into my left, trees into my right because they're imploding the world economy by design and they know you're gonna get really mad. And that's why DHS is gearing up for martial law, riot, you know, armored pillboxes, 450 million rounds of hollow point 40 cal, uh, shotguns, helicopters, attack drones, uh, combat mechs, ground, ground robot trucks, just, just total, total buildup for their enemy, the American people. While we're busy saluting the military every time we watch television, it's like, troops, troops, troops. I mean, if you study classic fascism or communism, authoritarianism, this is it. It's like the, it's like the, the transition of America from freedom to some weird North Korean state. You turn on the Olympics, it's all the family's bad, women kissing, men humping each other. Oh, shut up. You know, let the family hour have men humping each other. You know, again, we're just under total bombardment assault. I mean, reading this Time magazine, it's like bad mouthing, homeschooling, just everything is, 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 is just total, total evil. Everything in here is just... I mean, these are not liberals, folks. You've got to understand that. These are vicious, savage control freaks. Okay, let me just give you a smattering of what's in the news, okay? Let me just show you this. This is the type of stuff I deal with, that, that you deal with. I see this every day. At Penn's, Statter's new government gig. A Penn Starter's new government gig. Graham Spanner may have been ousted from his post at Penn State president over same over sex abuse scandal that engulfed the university. Again, a Penn starter's new government gig, Graham Spanier, is that how you pronounce it? May have been ousted from his post at Penn State president over the sex abuse scandal that engulfed the university. But it seems he's found a backup employer, the American taxpayer. Of course, he's now joined the Supreme Army. He should be a new TSA commander. They hire the defrock priest, the rapist. I mean, you know, don't even do background checks on it, or they do to make sure they're criminals and hire them. Uh, Spanier was faulted. Is that how you pronounce it? S-P-A-N-I-E-R? Is that how you pronounce that, guys? Spanier, yeah. Was faulted in an internal Penn State report after former assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky was convicted of child molestation. The report said the head coach, Joe Paterno, Spanier, and others had helped cover up Sandusky's abuse. But then it goes on. He's now working at a secret Homeland Security project for the U.S. government relating to national security, but they can't tell you. You know, where do people that cover up decades of children being raped and sold to uh, to donors to the university? Because that's what this was. Uh, that's even come out in the local news, but that's being covered up as well. Where do you go? You go to the big pedophile command base in the sky. 
I mean, that's where you go. I mean, that, that's who, I, I, how many times have I told you it's a pedophile operation at the top? You don't get into the upper reaches of it unless you're part of that club. I mean, just look at all these people. Just look at them. Would you let your any of the heads of Homeland Security, any of these government people, just look at their eyes, look at how they act, look at the head of the NSA, look at them all. And let me ask you something. Would you let your child be in a room alone with them? And the answer is not just no, H-E double hockey sticks, no. Does your skin crawl? Well, it should. In Rome, before it collapses the same way, usually these people take over. They've got to get in command to be able to brutalize. They really want to murder your children. Let's get that straight. They're, they're raping them as, mu as, as much as they can hurt them without killing them. And believe me, they kill them too. These globalists love killing little kids. But uh, until they get to that point, you know, bombing of Dresden, kill a couple hundred thousand kids in one night, beautiful to them. So there you go. Oh, but wait, there's more. This is in the Wall Street Journal, you name it. Mayor Bloomberg and the teachers unions protect pedophiles. And it goes on, a big report out in the Wall Street Journal today, how they just protect them and nobody gets in trouble. And that's just the way it is. There you go. Oh, that's just one, one little group of articles there. Let me do a plug here, too, if you want to know more about this. There's two films on one DVD, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove and The Order of Death. And Bohemian Grove is going to end uh, tomorrow. It's been going for the last week and a half or so. And uh, the Christian conservative leaders predominantly ship in all the gay porn stars for themselves. That's not, uh, you know, debated. That's even in Vanity Fair. I was like the cat in a cartoon with Pepe Le Pew chasing me the entire time when I was in there. I was only in there about four and a half hours being whistled at and, you know, all the rest of it. Yeah, world, world, you know, world leaders, heads of companies whistling at me. Uh, and so, I, you know, that's basically what's going on there. But that's just the opening salvo, ladies and gentlemen. You have to understand uh, of what really goes on inside of the globalist operations. So you need to get these at InfoWarsShop.com. And this is now back in print, expanded with a forward by Tex Mars, Mike Hansen, who infiltrated Bohemian Grove with me. This is the only modern updated, very well-written, expansive book about Bohemian Grove, not just our infiltration. And it is Bohemian Grove, Cult of Conspiracy. You get a free citizen rule book with it and more at InfoWarsShop.com. Uh, or you can uh, get there on the site a huge discount on the two films that uh, go with it. If you want to understand the uh, how deep the rabbit hole goes, I mean, let me tell you. Somebody like Sandusky was just a dungeon keeper. So they're burning the dungeon keeper who supplied the kids. Um, and, and again, uh, John DeCamp talked about this on my show more than a decade ago. I remember when he brought this up about Boys Town, later it came out, it was true, and, and Penn State and the football program. I was like, let's stop right there, because that hadn't been in court yet. But, and everybody pointed it out and found those interviews. Folks, this has been going on, of course, local news reports, that's the word, is that Sandusky was supplying little kids. Really, you, I mean, he's raping them at high noon on, you, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. I mean, he's, I mean, he's raping little kids in the showers with people milling around. I mean, this is a giant nest of scum. Uh, I told you Paterno knew, and of course it came out he knew. Of course he knew. I mean, I can take one look at that guy and it makes my skin crawl. Don't you people have any discernment? I mean, you know... I, you don't just judge a book off its cover. It's the it's the it's a spiritual thing. You can literally just see them. I mean, look at Sandusky. He looks like like a demonic ferret or a chipmunk or something. And 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 you know, uh, oh oh, but I was wrong to say Joe Paul or whatever his stupid name was, his stupid nickname. They took down the statue, didn't they? I was right. You were wrong. I was right. You were wrong. Okay. And it isn't about me being right here, okay? But I mean, you know, outside Bohemian Grove, repeatedly, little kids get kidnapped and killed and dumped out there. Polly Kloss, you name it. All, all the time, I, 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 you, know, you see little kids getting grabbed and picked up. And I mean, folks, they're getting taken nine times out of 10 for these people to literally rape the living daylights out of them and torture them for quite a period of time. Okay? It doesn't just stop with them raping little kids. They like to torture the living daylights out of them.
Okay, that's who runs your government. Just get that straight and get that through your head and understand that real good and let that burn in. And as soon as they get their guns, they're gonna turn hell loose on us. Texas Rangers tried to stop the public rape rooms at the Texas Youth Commission, where they were at selling the kids. The, the judges and elitists would come down and pick which kid they wanted out of the different deals. They had gladiatorial fights, paying tickets. Uh, Texas Rangers tried to stop it. They got shut down. And you know what? The commission got taken over by the very same crew, and it's business as usual. Nothing's gonna stop. You're not gonna stop these people now that they're in power and in control from having their way with your children until they're fully removed. Do you know about CPS? Do you know what a bunch of pedophiles they are? Again, our so-called guardians are a bunch of scum. And until we come right out with it and admit how much trouble we're in, it's over, no future. Okay, I've now covered one one little one little area of news here. Where should I start? I mean, I mean, there's just so much here that it makes my head spin. Oh, looky here. This is out of the New American. Uh, fluoride lowers IQ in kids. New study shows. Yeah, well, I mean, what are there? Hundreds of studies, literally. A review of some two dozen studies by Harvard University researchers. Oh, it's just Harvard. This month, a peer-reviewed federally uh, federal journal suggests that fluoride added to the water supplies significantly decreases the IQ of children. Uh, yeah, that's why every store you go to, they got bottled water that says extra fluoride for kids. That's why the kids, you know, it, it tastes like bubble gum, the uh, toothpaste. Is brand I mean, there's a reason the public's mentally dumbed down. I mean, this was not, they didn't put it in the water at the, at the gulags under Lenin and Stalin and then Hitler because they wanted to, you know, take care of the inmates. <laughs> <laughs> Fluoride lowers IQs in kids, new study shows. But it doesn't matter, they're going to keep doing it. And if you go to your city council and say, I want this out, they're going to laugh at you. Until you sue them. You know, they're assaulting you and their, your family, just like they want to get your kid in a room and blow their head off. Just like they want it. These people, let me tell you, these people like to torture a kid for a couple months and just, and just use them up is what they call it, just savagely terrorizing them. And then they just chop them up with a meat cleaver, blow their head off. And you know what? I know you're not going to protect the children. It's too scary for mainline people. You're mainline, which means you're into picking up whatever uh, you know the establishment says is the end thing and then following it, even though that establishment is a bunch of psycho killers. Fluoride seems to fit in with lead, mercury, and other poisons that causes chemical brain damage, noted senior study author Felipe Gragine, a professor of environmental health at Harvard. The effect of each toxicant may seem small, but the combined damage on the population scale can be serious, especially because the brain power of the next generation is crucial to all of us. No, it's not, buddy boy. They're spraying aluminum dioxide on us to make sure we can't escape. They've engineered all the GMO crops to attack our organs. Or disorders of the gut are running rampant everywhere. I was at a business meeting last night at a restaurant slash bar and overheard two different people. One guy even talked to him. He's like, he's like, yeah, can we fix this plug? Is there something we can do with this little plug that doesn't just pop out just constantly out of the thing? It's just driving me. I mean, it's it just totally breaks my train of thought. I don't know what I'm going to do, but the point is that... This guy's like, yeah, I got to leave Austin, Texas and go back to Virginia, wherever it was. My dad's dying of Crohn's. And I heard somebody else talking about somebody in their family dying of it. It was unknown 50 years ago. It's just, oh, we're just all going to die and let a bunch of perverts run everything. And they're not even perverts. They'll have a Renfield type like uh, Sandusky who actually likes to rape kids. The globalists like to pull their teeth out with pliers and torture the hell out of them. I mean, that's, that's really what they're into. By the way, I have a Dungeon Keeper article out of uh, BuzzFeed. Report, U.S. general ignored Auschwitz-like conditions to help Obama, where people were being eaten by maggots in Afghanistan. Uh, the soldiers, uh, everyone was starving to death. But, 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 but we'll get to that later. But th that's a beautiful thing for them. We'll be right back. Like, man, this is, this is hardcore what this guy's talking about. Well, I just cover what I've discovered and what I've found. And the evil we face is so over the top that only an immediate in-its-face 
awakening will give us any chance. I mean, the system is so evil. It's full of so many criminals, so many people that are so bad, words cannot describe it, that we've got to break with the system and realize it's alien, it's false, it's evil. It comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The churches have been taken over. It's 24-7 government worship fest there. Uh, you should be offended by all of this. I know I am. And here they are hiring the Penn State president to work for Homeland Security, quote, in a secretive position. Just like they've hired all these pedophiles to run the TSA. Just like they busted the head of the Florida uh, CPS a few years ago was a pedophile. And then it turned out their two deputies were. They're like, oh, there was no background check. Oh, there was a background check done. These people have taken over. They're buying weapons. They're using our money to arm against us and getting the police trained to attack us. And I want to just tell the police, I know on average you're good men and women. And a lot of you got in there with, you know, with a desire to do good. I know that. But a lot of you have been recruiting thugs now, and we're in deep trouble. And let me tell you, this country is going to fall. All right, I said I'd go to your calls. And I, again, I've got like 20 stacks of news. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, there's power outages all over the country as they shut down coal power plants. Uh, China builds three a week. We can't even get two a year. We're just shutting down. Uh, I've got that news. Uh, 370. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's Associated Press. It says 370 uh, Indianans, but it can't be 370 million. There's, there's only... Oh, yeah, that's in India, yeah. Yeah, that's another article. I was seeing that, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. No, yeah, I'm talking about the Daily Caller. I'm talking about here in the United States. Uh, record number of coal-fired generators to be uh, shut down. There's power outages around different areas of the United States. Okay, let's go to Michael in Oklahoma. Michael, you're on the air. Welcome. Okay, you don't want to talk? Or you do? Okay, Michael's not there. Jason in New Hampshire, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. How you doing, Alex? I'm not doing too good. Uh, they're publicly well, hiring uh, perverts to run everything. That, that, uh, that's wrong. I mean, I listen to your show every day, and I got to tell you, I got my, the back of my car plastered with uh, bumper stickers that I've gotten off you. Well, thank you, sir. We couldn't do it without you. And, uh... I just wanted to ask you a question. Uh, you know, I got pulled over a month ago in uh, Wakefield, New Hampshire, for speeding. They said I was speeding. And uh, they, uh, I had a returning vet uh, that was just back maybe not even a month. And uh, it felt like a setup because they came to the car. And they're like, uh, who's he? Who's he? And I'm like, I don't know. I picked him up hitchhiking. And uh, they basically just, like, without throwing me out of the car, they basically told me to get out, and they searched my car, and they, in his backpack, he had needles and stuff, and they basically got me with uh, everything that they got him with, and I didn't know what was Well, that's, that's easy. You just get a uh, jury trial, and you go, hey, I just gave a hitchhiker a ride, and uh, this feels like a setup. And, yeah. uh, and, and, I mean, if they did set you up, can you imagine how horrible the lives of those police are? I mean, folks, when you do stuff like that, you get bad mojo, okay? Karma, reap what you sow, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you wonder why your life's so miserable. If you randomly pull people, you know, sit there and have one of your people out there as an informant and then do that to set people up, uh, it's just incredible. But it might have just been that was somebody they were tracking and they pulled you over. But, I mean, that, that'll be found not guilty by a jury trial very, very quickly. Yeah, and uh, this might make you laugh a little bit. I mean, uh, I was at the uh, races in Loudoun uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, uh, state police, it's like New World Order times 10 there, you know? No, no, no. This yeah. is the takeover. We're all being acclimated to martial law so the bankers can destroy the country. Well, NYPD to launch all-seeing tracking system, and uh, they're uh, hiring... All over the country, uh, people like the president of Penn State who helped cover up that little operation, that little money-making operation as part of a secretive Homeland Security group. And Big Sis has announced that 30,000 drones will be used for public safety. We had an article out on that on Friday. It was added into another article at Infowars.com that got linked up at the Drudge Report. Drones to be used for public safety. But, but we have a separate article, not, not that one, that, that just focuses on that. Uh, that uh, we're going to be uh, covering uh, after we go to some of your phone calls here. Uh, Walter in New Jersey. 
uh, is because uh, I opened the phones up and the last caller, I, I, I wanted callers to call in about the fact they've introduced a bill to ban all semi-autos, basically, and the clips. And it, I didn't even know Michael Savage has endorsed this. Uh, basically, all the so-called conservatives got desperate because they realized the whole game was up because America woke up and became pro-gun. So they're now flipping over going, well, it's it's pro-gun to turn your guns in. And now I'm a liberal because I don't want to turn my guns in. Did, did you call in about that, Walter, or something else? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, Alex, first-time caller, long-time listener and watcher. Uh, I was at uh, Chantilly to sign my InfoWars flag on the last day down there back in June. Um, yes, uh, as far as the, uh, the cybersecurity bill is concerned, our two illustrious senators, Lautenberg and Menendez, have uh, signed on to this bill. And I sent them emails, and I'm, I'm totally frustrated with this whole thing. But what I'd also like to know is, what happens if they knock on my door at 3 a.m. in the morning? Well, they won't knock. Door? No, no, they'll come in. And uh, I mean, their favorite thing is hit with CES and set your house on fire. And they'll make some examples. And you know, oorah, Team America wins for the bankers. I mean, this is—they're getting them all geared up for it. They're, a lot of these guys are looking forward to this. Yeah, well, I'm all geared up too. I, I pity the people that come in. <laughs> well, well, here's the deal, this, sir. This is what's going to happen if they start going into people's houses and shooting them up, and. You know, going after those that don't turn them in when the order comes, people aren't going to wait in their houses for the police. I mean, you understand that, right? I do understand that. I don't want to wait in my house, but if they if they start this, it's going to be really hard to get away in a car, and, and if they have roadblocks and all kinds of contingencies set up to get the people. So. But, I mean, you understand a roadblock would be a death trap for those trying to take the guns, even if they've ordered the armored pillboxes. Oh, I think so. It's going to be like the Wild West out here or anywhere else. Well, I mean, look, I don't know how many people have studied guerrilla tactics, but I mean, it's 101 that, that if, you know, they try to put people in re-education camps and arrest everybody, folks aren't going to just sit in their houses. Um, they're going to go out. And the police are getting ready for this. That's why they're all going to unmarks that aren't even marked. And this is all a covert takeover by foreign banks. America is being conquered right now. This is the fall of the republic. We were taken over from within. And I'm reaching out to military and police to understand that. And, but, I mean, a lot of them are just going to salute because the bankers use the American flag. You understand I that? I mean, a lot of them are on fluoride just like the general public and can hardly tie their shoelaces. But I'm sorry. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add, my friend? Uh, no, that's pretty much it, Alex. Great job. Uh, love watching your show. Well, thanks for putting up with me. I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, we're going to come back and uh, try to hurry through Frank. Tim, Aaron, and uh, Ghost Recon that are patiently holding. In fact, Ghost Recon's first, then Frank, Tim, and Aaron, and others. And I'll try to refocus here because there's a lot of news I need to hit. But I am going to get into the Second Amendment and play some clips coming up. And we've got some economic news coming up. Uh, quite frankly, uh, again, they're just moving forward even though we're waking up. And uh, they're planning to start a civil war between the police, military, and the American people, uh, which is the plan of the bankers then bring in foreign troops after we've defeated our own military and police. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the best of times and the worst of times. The American people are waking up to the New World Order, to the global corporate takeover, to the eugenicist, to the fact that the Green Movement is just an authoritarian movement that could care less about the environment and public safety. Uh, Big Sis is announcing drones to be used for public safety. DHS spy in the sky to provide situational awareness. And uh, they've got other bizarre quotes in here about, you know, total awareness and all this other bizarre garbage. So we're going to be breaking all of that down. But Paul Watson just put a new article up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com that really freaked me out. We were talking early this morning and he said, hey, what articles you want me to look at today? And I said, well, what are you working on? Because you know, most of the time he basically comes up with his you know, his own uh, direction. But he'll ask me, you know, which direction we should go in. And I said, well, I don't see any coverage other than the Drudge Report and InfoWars. DrudgeReport.com, InfoWars.com. I don't hear it on talk radio, not last week, not over the weekend, not today. Where they're talking about all these top Republicans saying ban semi-auto weapons, turn them in. And we've got legislation introduced now, racing through the House and Senate 
to ban all clips above 10 rounds, possession of them, and to restrict devices, guns that can take them. I mean, this is one of the biggest gun bans I've ever even heard of. This is what Michael Moore is calling for. And I've played the clips here last week of uh, Bill Crystal and, and, and all the rest of them saying, you don't need semi-auto, let's ban them. And saying, come on, Democrats, we're going to support you. Don't back off this. Because the whole power structure is now showing their cards that they really fight with each other over power, but not over the direction they want to go in. I mean, Charlton Heston, God bless him, great actor, been on my show a couple times. Uh, he supported the 67 Gun Control Act. When I first heard that, I didn't believe it. And somewhere years ago, I found the TV ad. I've got it somewhere here in the office. We've got like huge storage rooms of tapes and stuff. Uh, him on TV promoting the 60. 68 Gun Control Act, not 67. And that's an example of how they use the people we trust most. And I don't think Charlton Heston was a bad guy. He was just you know, being sold the idea that it was reasonable to do this. No, ladies and gentlemen, they want semi-autos because they are what can resist a military and foreign takeover. It's not the, quote, assault rifles that are being used in the crimes. They've picked those because most guns are semi-auto, and they're calling all of those assault rifles. Now, I was reading Paul's article when it went up about 10 minutes ago during the last couple breaks, and I was going through the clips. I didn't know Michael Savage had called for banning all semi-autos. There's a video link, an audio link to it. Technically, it's audio put to YouTube. Uh, I mean, I mean it, it's a lot worse than I even knew. There it is. Michael Savage calls for gun control. Folks, I mean, he was a beatnik in the 60s. And I'm not going to get into Michael Savage bashing fest here, but I remember him saying, if you disagreed with the government and were a 9-11 truther, you should be put in a forced labor camp five years ago. I, I, I remember him saying, put... Question. I certainly... Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll uh, play that uh, coming up here in a little while. But we've got a whole bunch of these, a whole bunch of these clips. And, and see, now we're going to be called the liberals and the communists because we don't want to turn our guns in. And I'm not joking, by the way, about that. You tell mainline conservatives on Fox News, turn their guns in, half of them will do it. And again, they wouldn't have come out like this on a major talking point. If the system wasn't desperate and knowing they're getting ready to collapse everything, and Michael Savage and all of them are showing the system that if they go to martial law in October, launch an Iran war, stage a bunch of stuff, that they're going to toe the line. When they get ready to drop the hammer, folks, is when you start seeing behavior like this. Now, if you want to see all the video and hear all the audio and all its horror, go to Infowars.com. Why are Republicans calling to disarm the American people? While the federal government is arming itself to the teeth against conservatives, Paul Joseph Watson, and saying that we're their number one enemy, real constitutionalist. The recent deluge of attacks against the Second Amendment were completely predictable in the aftermath of the Colorado massacre. But what perhaps wasn't so expected was the fact that a lot of them have come from so-called Republicans. Yeah, I heard so-called conservative talk show hosts this morning going, yeah, we may have to restrict, yeah, we may have to have security in the movies. Folks, Mass shootings are flat in the last 20 years. They're incredibly rare. But again, they're creating this fear. The TSA is now saying, well, we'll be in the shopping malls now. I told you that rollout was happening. They, they were getting ready months ago for the rollout. This is all time, just like the underwear bomber was put on the plane by the U.S. government. A week before the scanners were set to roll out January 1st. And they actually said on the news, oh, they're putting them in now because of this, when they started manufacturing them and put the order in 14 months before. It's all scripted. And, 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 but this is a big victory. When they say how guns won and they panic at the cover of Time magazine and say, what are we going to do? They you know, they don't want to turn their guns in. They're crazy. No, it's because we know you're authoritarians. But now the Weekly Standard's calling for it, turning your guns, ban all semi-autos. Bill Crystal, Michael Savage, Bill O'Reilly, uh, Rupert Murdoch. Scalia's like, well, hey, you can restrict stuff if, if it's scary. And he lists some colony ruling about going around with a special axe for chopping heads off and menacing people with it. You can't menace somebody with a firearm. Scalia, you're a lawyer. You're a Supreme Court justice. You know you're lying to people, you sack of trash. 
You know full well those colony laws were about menacing. We have the same laws today. If I go out in the street with a battle axe and, and menace people and threaten them with it, that's disorderly conduct. And that's, I looked it up. That's what they're talking about. But he's like, you can't have something that's scary. We have the clip. We'll play it in a moment. But you can read it. Although normally aligned with the right to keep and bear arms, over the last week, numerous self-proclaimed conservatives have proven themselves to be wolves in sheep's clothing. Well, yeah, George W. Bush tried to get the assault weapons ban reauthorized. And I was in McBride's gun shop talking to one of the guys who was a listener, and I said, yeah, I can't believe Bush is supporting it, but what do you expect? And the guy's like, hey, buddy, don't you say that about Bush? And the owner comes over and goes, no, actually, he is supporting it. And they're like, really? But still, the guy was mad at me. I, I, I get it. You don't really want the Second Amendment. You don't really want freedom. You want to feel like the Republican Party is going to save you. Mitt Romney, who supports an assault weapons ban, which means all semi-auto. Notice how they manipulate the language. So they're all calling for it. I mean, I mean this, this has got just... Page after page after page after page of Republican leaders calling. And, and, and you know, Bill Crystal's like, hey, we support you, Obama. We'll get behind you. Let's, let's ban it now. Because they're so upset. They know that a bunch of freshman Republicans are going to come in in the House, may even take the Senate. And they're freaked out bad. Real conservatives and libertarians and constitutionalists, if they don't have total election fraud, which they're going to pull, are taking over the states, the counties, the cities, and even Congress, and they're scared. Boehner, who's anti-gun, is in trouble. There's revolts against Boehner. They are upset right now. They see the whole momentum teeter-tottering against them. A real counter-revolution against their globalist takeover. And let me tell you, these guys have either got mistresses or boyfriends or... They have been insider trading, and it is blackmail. It is blackmail, except for people like Crystal. His dad was the head of the Trotskyites. I mean, do you know about the neocons? They were kicked out by Stalin. Trotsky was their leader, and Mr. Crystal's father was the head when Trotsky was killed. And they said, we can't take over uh, as uh, communist. America doesn't like that. We will take over the conservatives. These are communists, okay? <laughs> Not to explain that to you here. I mean, and people are like, oh, yeah, no, Crystal's a good guy because he bashes Democrats all day. Let me tell you, folks, they have an old scam where they'll have a beautiful woman act like a man is um, slapping her around in a parking lot you know, in front of another man who's their mark. You know, they'll wait by your nice car, and then she'll be like, stop it, no, uh, and then... You know, you'll say, hey, stop that, and the guy will run off, and then she gets in the car and then puts a gun to your head and takes you to your house where you know he's following to totally steal everything you got. And, and that's all this is. You got uh, you know, Bill Crystal with lipstick on, you know, but, uh, with a blonde wig on, and, and you know, he's there with Obama going, get your hands off me, get your hands off me. And you finally woke up to this, and so... She's basically, uh, Mrs. Crystal, is basically running defense for him. And he's like, it's reasonable to ban the Shimiano. Come on. Come on. Eee. Offshore banks rob the country. We're not going to convert this takeover. It's my empire. Uh, Pax Americana. We're not going to get what we want if they're buying three, four million guns a month. Uh, uh, uh. It's over. I mean, Larry Pratt has come out and said, looks like Colorado staged. I got basically no backlash from coming out and breaking that down. Everybody I know agrees with me. It's over. All you got left is starting a war with Russia or Iran or both to get us to rally around your tyranny. All you've got left is staging a bunch of terror attacks. And our people are watching everywhere now. When you got drugged up Mutalib on the plane, we were watching. We know you drugged up the, the McDonald's killer. The evil Ronald McDonald guy that can't talk, he's so drugged up. I mean, we, we know he's got a psych warfare chief over him. I mean, we know. Look, it, 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 yeah, yeah. look, 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 look. Go ahead. I wish you wouldn't. Go ahead and stage your mass shootings. I, I, I've said theaters, shopping malls, because I see the TSA rollout, police stations. Go ahead and stage them. Um, 
I guess that's what you do, but 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 we're going to be here exposing you every step of the way. Okay, terrorist, this is a foreign banking hijacking takeover of the republic. It's that simple. This is how America dies. This is how it gets infiltrated. This is how it gets taken over. Okay, by foreign banks that brag they've done it. I'm going to finish up with the guns, then go to your phone calls, I promise. We're going to get to Ghost Recon, Frank, everybody. But I'm going to finish up the gun news. Empowered by the offshore banks that control the issuance of currency and credit, have signed us on to their 1.5 quadrillion globally. They say in the Washington Post, our share is 644 trill. Even though we don't owe it, we owe 15 trill through fraud to these people. They should all go to jail. But instead, they know you're waking up. They know that everybody's angry. We have a, These people are not invincible. I notice the churches are all 24-7 saying the rapture is about to happen. On all my articles and videos talking about this, it's the rapture is tomorrow. The rapture is tomorrow. Guaranteed that's a government bot. Just like, no, don't stand up. Don't get involved. No, 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 no. Evil is coming. It's of the Lord. You can't resist it. You know, the founding fathers were wrong to stand up against it. Romans 13, Romans 13, Romans 13. I mean, they're, they're, they're entering the crisis zone. They staged this event. It totally freaked them out when, whether he's total mind control or he's a drugged up patsy, which is in Northwoods. It's staged either way. Guaranteed, as I told you in all the telltale signs, it's ridiculous how obvious this is now come out. To the point of, again, where Larry Pratt has to say it looks like an inside job and he's joining us. And so now you have from Scalia, and, and, and he did the lightest. I mean, I mean, some of these people, like Crystal and Savage, said just ban semi-auto, which is what Michael Moore and them are saying. So you see the power structure circling the wagons. Kurt's term for it is right, because they get it. They're like, whoa, everybody wants a gun. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian. Everybody doesn't trust the government now. And the people... Are, are losing their trust in us and they're quickly radicalizing. All their internal manuals and public statements say that. And again, they expected to have this war with us. They expected to start this civil war. They're buying the hundreds of millions of hollow points, the armored vehicles, the pillboxes, the checkpoints, the highway dividers. They got troops rolling around all over the country on the news, setting up weird checkpoints. Hey, what's that, daddy? Oh, it's just the army. Uh, and, the, and the military just looks at you getting you ready. I mean, they're acclimating everybody for what? Giant wars with Iran, with Russia coming into it. And then everybody will be like, I don't like Obama, or I don't like Romney, but we're in a war. I guess, I guess Crystal says I got to turn it in. Iranian Hezbollah sleeper cells shot up 20 theaters yesterday. I guess we can't be trusted. We got to turn them in. I guess, I'll folks, it isn't going to be Hezbollah that does that. It's going to be banker law. Hezbo Federal Reserve, Al Qaeda, the same jihadis they got taken over Libya and Syria. Grow up, folks, or be slaves. Grow up and admit how much trouble we're in. I'm up here risking my life. Believe it every day. And the NSA spiles and everything. They know how big the show is. I don't really brag about it, folks, because it's freaking me out. Because I'm just an average person. Everywhere I go, anywhere in the country now, every other person is a listener. I cannot walk down the street. I cannot go to the bathroom at a restaurant. I cannot go anywhere, anywhere. I can go to Central America. I can go to England. It isn't every 20 people stop like it was. Now it's every other person. Let me tell you something, folks. The signal of liberty got out there. And these tyrants are coming down on us like a ton of bricks. Let's play part of Scalia. Going, well, yeah, you can't scare people. No, no, you can't menace people. It's not that the axe is illegal, it's the menacing. And so you don't want to have a, a rocket launcher. We, we can't have a rocket launcher, Scalia. You, I see people getting arrested for buying, buying them at the Army-Navy stores, the empty ones that are one-time use. And there's no law, but the jury still sends you to jail, even though the rocket launcher's legal. When I was a kid, my mom, I'd beg her, would take me to the Army-Navy store, and I'd get, I'd get a, 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 a defused hand grenade with no explosive in it. I'd, I'd get a Laws rocket, an uh, Army helmet. The other kids had them. We'd run around the woods all day. She's like, you won't run around and mess up the house if I buy you the, if I buy you the, the old, you know, the hand grenade? Nowadays, folks, they're arresting people that have them on their desk after 25 years. It's an empty hand grenade. No explosive, no nothing. It's an empty fragmentation hand grenade. They're arresting people for those, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, 
time it's the funnest thing I ever did running around with an old plastic laws rocket. I think some kid came over and stole it. I had that thing for like three years. Let me tell you, it was fun running around on the golf course with the laws rocket. And the point is that just last month in California, a kid had a spent laws rocket they bought. They arrested the dad, everybody. And they said, well, they're still going to jail because they had a BB gun too. <laughs> what? A BB gun wasn't illegal in LA. They don't care. They're coming after our guns. I'm going to come back and play Scalia and then go to your phone calls. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a game. This is not a joke. This is not a drill. They're showing you. They're, there's only one party. Are there some good Republicans low level? The, you know, the Tea Party types who won't compromise? Yeah. And the system knows they're about to fully take over. So the Republican leadership's going, wait a minute. To be conservative means you turn your guns in. They're saying, hey, should the American people be able to have anything the military has? And uh, this is about keeping and bearing arms. It means firearms, knives, things you can carry. But the military is coming out with all these incredibly high-tech weapons that our tax money paid for and now deploying this stuff against us. So the discussion should be, why do we have the military deploying against us? Why is Department of Defense satellites being used to spy on farmers? Why are you taking our tax money to militarize us as your new growth market in no-bid contracts? That's the big issue here. Not, oh my gosh, the American people are getting 100 round barrels and trying to scare people. By the way, I've used a lot of these barrels and if you load them just right, they still end up jamming at around round 70 or so. Okay, I mean, it is, it is, it is, it is legendary. It is, it is completely legendary. But that isn't even what this is about. There were mass shootings in the 1870s and stuff where 34 people got killed, where the person was using, uh, you know, single shot. That isn't what this is about. You could sit there with clips, 10 round mags, jamming them in over and over again, killing people. It's about saying, let's ban everything with 10 mags and over and things that can take, uh, you know, magazines. The ATF said they want to ban stuff that can take magazines. And they're saying they want them banned. There's now a bill introduced in the Cybersecurity Act getting a bunch of sponsorship to ban your semi-autos and clips. And again, no one's talking about it. And so as to not get folks riled up, because I guess the word's coming down, they're going to try it. They got Michael Savage out going, no, it's time to ban semi-autos. Michael Savage, I've got the clip up at Infowars.com right now. Why are Republicans calling to disarm the American people? While the federal government is arming itself with the teeth against conservatives. This is such an important issue because let me tell you, I want the nightmare to be over. I want Obama to leave and I wish Mitt Romney was a good guy. But folks, the same people are financing Mitt Romney. The same people are financing him because they've got an agenda. And people like Scalia... And others, I mean, you notice they had one of the Republicans vote for the health care. When it comes down to it, they're going to do what they're told. And they're being told, go after those guns. News Corps, on their non-news stuff, promotes anti-family, carbon taxes, all this stuff. Rupert Murdoch's always been anti-gun, folks. They want to control the conservative market. That's all this has ever been. And... We're in a lot of trouble. Okay, I'm. let's go to Scalia. Just listen to him. Now, Now he's not like Crystal and all others saying just outright ban him. He, but he's the Supreme Court justice on a news show saying, now get ready, folks, because, you know, we're allowed to restrict it. Can't have a rocket launcher. There's already laws on that, and you know it. They're having straw man debates. And then he lies and says you can't have something that's scary. And, the, and what he talked about is a famous case about a guy threatening people with a battle axe. You can't go out with a sword, a machete with a knife, with a gun, and, and brandish it on the street. You can have it on your side, but you cannot brandish it at people. Just like cops aren't supposed to pull their gun out for no reason or sign the ticket and put their hand on their gun. Police have gotten in trouble for that and courts have ruled against them. Because that's that in the threat continuum, that's a preparation to use deadly force. You're not supposed to do that, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, if you point a gun at somebody, you better be ready to kill them. In, in my world, if I point a gun at you, I'm going to shoot you. 
If I look at somebody breaking into my garage, I'm going to have the gun at my side. I'm going to say, you know, get out of my garage because I don't want to kill somebody. I have to deal with the trouble. But if they were to start moving towards me, I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to shoot them right in the chest repeatedly. Now, you come in my house, you know, I'm not going to say anything to you. The first thing you're going to hear is white flashes and your eardrums ringing as you hit the ground as I pump rounds directly into your chest. People are like, ooh, that's radical. No, it's not. My ancestors were mean. My ancestors didn't put up with people's garbage. And you know what? I got freedom. My family's got land because they fought for it. I am successful because my genetics and my background are from aggressive people that aren't going to get pushed around, but also moral people who know how to shake hands on a deal and do what you say you're going to do and deliver. It's called Americana. It's called what made this country great. And you know what? Regardless of what background you come from, you've got ancestors like that. So how about we uphold our family names and live up to something good instead of letting a bunch of globalists run over us? Let's go to this clip, and then I'll uh, go to your phone calls, and then I'm going to give you financial news. Uh, let's go ahead, and uh, here is Scalia saying, well, you can't have something that's scary. Wow, what? I mean, folks, do you know that the Supreme Court justice is saying you can't have something that's scary? Well, I mean, a butcher knife isn't scary when my, when my wife's cutting carrots with it, but let me tell you, I pull it out and threaten to jab it in your, in your heart or slit your throat with it. It's super scary. Well, see, that's the difference. You can't menace somebody for no reason with something. That's what's illegal, not the battle act, Scalia. And you know that well, Scalia. And boy, he looks like he was at the end of a plank or something, like somebody had a gun to his back when he's saying this. I mean, he knows he's committing suicide with his supporters, politically. Political suicide. And why are they walking the plank? Because because let me tell you, they're bought and paid for, folks, and the bankers are circling the wagons. They're imploding the world. They're bringing in world government. They're engineering a collapse, and they're not going to have anybody stand in the way of that. Let's go to Scalia. Here it is. To an issue that is in the news right now with the massacre in Colorado, and that is gun control. Uh, you wrote in 2008 uh, the, the opinion in District of Columbia v. Heller, uh, the majority opinion that said the Second Amendment means what it says. People have a right to bear arms. Question, how far does that constitutional right go? Can a legislature ban semi-automatic weapons or can it ban magazines that carry a hundred rounds without violating an individual's constitutional right to bear arms? What the opinion in Heller said is that uh, it will have to be decided in future cases what limitations upon the right to keep and bear arms are permissible. Some undoubtedly are because there were some that were acknowledged at the time. For example, there was a tort called a frighting, which if you carried around a really horrible weapon just to scare people like a, a head axe or something, that, that was... Uh, I believe a misdemeanor. So, uh, yes, there are some limitations that can be uh, imposed. What they are will depend on what the, what the society understood were reasonable limitations at the time. There were certain location limitations. Uh, where, where, but what where about these technological limitations? Obviously, we're not now talking about a handgun or a musket. We're talking about a, a weapon that can fire 100 shots in a minute. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean... Uh, Obviously, the uh, uh, the amendment does not apply to uh, uh, arms that cannot be hand carried. It's to keep and bear, so it doesn't apply to cannons. But I suppose there are handheld rocket launchers that can bring down airplanes that will will have to be uh, uh, it'll have to so be how decided. How do you decide that if you're a textualist? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> my, my my starting point and probably my ending point will be. Uh, what limitations are within the understood limitations that the society had at the time? They had some limitations on the nature of arms that could be born. So it, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, uh, what, what those okay, limitations that is are. Not, that them. is not true. And there were not location controls. They had their guns in church. Total lie. Uh, and no one can have a uh, grenade launcher, a rocket launcher, um, you can buy them for movies and stuff and shoot a toy rocket out of them, but you can't get the warheads. That's just absolutely locked up in armories. They know that. But he says it'll have to be adjudicated because you can have a rocket launcher. 
Now, that, that compared to Savage and all of them just saying ban all semi-autos, Michael Savage has now become Michael Moore. And a lot of people are like, hey, I'll turn my gun in if he says do it. Okay, well, listen, you want to listen to an old beatnik who figured out there was a conservative market and took it over? Knock yourselves out. You know, I'm not trying to get into a, uh, you know, big frackish. The point is the article's up there if you can face the reality how much trouble we're in. Uh, Frank in North Carolina, then Ghost Recon in Oregon. Frank, thanks for holding her on the air. What do you, what do you make of um, all these big Republicans coming out and saying the same thing? Ban semi-autos. Well, actually, I was calling to talk about Scalia, but you've already covered that. <clears throat> it doesn't no, go ahead. Surprise me. Yeah, it does. No, no, you've already covered it. It doesn't surprise me at all. I just wasn't sure if you were aware of uh, him uh, on the. I'm not even sure what show that was, but yeah, I, I heard some of that earlier today. But uh, are, are you aware that uh, have you talked to Colonel Six lately? No, I don't think he's gotten through. Why? Well. Uh, I'm not sure if it's true or not, but I uh, understand that he's an African-American Marine uh, colonel, uh, pretty big. I think he led uh, some tank brigade into uh, Baghdad or something like that during the first Gulf War. Well, <clears throat> I'm, I hope I'm not incorrect on this, but I understand that he is dead. He uh, supposedly was an outspoken critic of uh, Obama, and I understand he committed suicide recently. You're joking. I'm gonna, folks, look that up right now. I mean, I knew that he was who he said in the Marines. I didn't know about that particular. And I know he said that uh, that uh, that, uh, that top general uh, was going to be uh, brought down. Um, who was the one that got removed in Afghanistan? The name will pop my head in a minute. Uh, he said that was going to happen months before. He did give us a lot of good stuff. You're saying he got Arkansas? Well, I don't know. They, uh, I heard this on some shortwave show uh, about a week or so ago. He is apparently dead. Uh, it sounded like a very credible report. Um, All right, I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Uh, well, I, listen, if I end up committing suicide, folks, that's a lie. In fact, in fact I've got my living will filed here with local lawyers. I, I, I have handwritten that I want full everything, and, and then I, I, I added Darth Vader-level life support. Yeah, I want I want the whole nine yards. I want everything. I will never commit suicide ever, 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 ever. Just get, you know, get that straight. Oh my gosh. Well, I I, I hope that's not the case, sir. I, I, I hope that that was a rumor or something. And, um, wow. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah. Did you ever see the movie Shooter? Yes, uh, Mark Wahlberg, very good movie, very, very accurate. Mar Marine Scout Sniper gets set up, and it shows in meticulous detail how they go about setting someone up to become a shooter and a patsy. No, no, they hire you to be part of a drill, just like 7-7 seven, seven, it came out, and then, they, and then they blow you up, yeah. And they, I mean, they're very accurate, you're right. I worked in a movie theater back in the early 80s. It was, uh, at the time, it was a state-of-the-art theater. Uh, it's a six-plex or whatnot, and uh, I, I worked there for a couple of years in high school. When those doors opened, those exit doors, trust me, we knew it. This is back in the early 80s, and we, we were required to run down there and run the kids off because there was, there was all, you know, we did the midnight movies. We did all of that. I mean, we were... We were yeah, and of course, and on the opening of a Batman, you're going to have people in that hallway back there where it opens up. You're going to have people in the theater. I mean, it's standard procedure. The whole thing's cockamamie, folks. God bless you. I appreciate your call. Uh, yeah, we'll look into what he said there. Uh, Ghost in Oregon, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how's it going? It's great to talk to you. Uh, it's not going too good. I mean, our worst nightmares are coming true. Uh, they're 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 going to move. They're they're going to move on the guns. So, I agree. I I totally agree. I'm um, ex-military myself. Uh, I've been out since '98, uh, and uh, I woke up back then during the service. And I got to tell you, I got to tell the listeners that you must listen to Alex. He knows what he's talking about. This is not a joke. It's not a game. These people are serious, and they really want to come for your guns. And when they do it, they're not going to knock on your door, and they're not going to be cool about it. They're just going to come in, and they're going to take what they want. And they're going to put a bullet in anything that stops or tries to stop them. And people need to wake up to this. They, I don't understand why so many people are arguing about the Constitution. It blatantly states that the guns are there so we can defend ourselves, so we can... From the government what at a time... Uh, this is when the Second Amendment was meant to be. I mean, this is it. We've been taken over by foreign banks that brag they've done it. 
I mean, how arrogant is this? We've got a homeland security system there to absorb the old republic. It's all run by pedophiles and criminals publicly. And, and it's a joke what we put up with. And they plan to march the military and police up against the American people. And it's going to be a giant civil war. And that's the false flag. They want to start this. And I again tell the military and police, do not be part of it. Do not be part of it. You, and don't just say you won't be part of it. You've got to speak out now, okay? That is the bare minimum, ladies and gentlemen. You've got, listen, just look at Napolitano. Look at Obama. Look at these globalists. Look at Bill Crystal. They're a bunch of scum. These are authoritarians. Bill Crystal thinks you're so dumb. He wrote an article with Dick Cheney saying we need a big terror attack that'll kill 3,000 people like Pearl Harbor. And we need race specific weapons to kill certain people and have the media agree with it. And we're going to launch a big takeover and have a police state in America. September 20th, 2000, Rebuilding America's Defenses, PNAC. Rand Corporation writes all this because they know the public doesn't read it. it how do I know what's going to happen? Because they've told us what they're going to do. That's how dumb they think we are. They're operating open in front of us. I mean, it's ridiculous. Anything else, sir? comes out there's a brand new thing that they sit there and they release and everybody ooh ah but it's really not that new i mean they, they they post this information months sometimes years before they actually do it but it's all out there you just have to bloody well read people are just so inept and so just i want everything yesterday give me my fries and my drink and my shake or whatever meanwhile psych harvard admits with over a dozen studies that fluoride is eating our brain. And folks, they put it in all the different children's products. The kids are mentally retarded. They're murdering us. People are like, well, that's a little harsh. That's reality. We're run by total psycho mad scientists. I don't know how else to get this across to people. I guarantee you, if I walked up to the average cop and slapped them in the face, they would beat my head in with the billy club and take me to jail. And they should. But people weaponize food and water, and they and, and, and not just police, the general public loves being assaulted. You know how sick it is to go to a grocery store and see all over everywhere, all over everywhere, four kids, fluoride toothpaste, fluoride water, four babies, oh, uh, you know, P Pedialyte with aspartame. I mean, they know what that's doing to people, folks. This is a sick joke. This is the sickest of jokes. Thank you so much, sir. I'm going to come back at some financial news. Then we'll get to Tim, Aaron, uh, Ken, and others. We're going to have uh, popping in on the show Larry Pratt about the devastation we're facing, the head of the Gunners of America, uh, what this signifies. I know in all his years, uh, I would imagine, I don't know, I'm going to ask him, has he ever seen the most of the Republican leadership come out and say, well, you don't need semi-auto. I mean, this is like Bill Clinton has suddenly become, has, in, has in possessed Michael Savage. Uh, I mean, we are in, so, because folks, they only uncloak like this when they're about to drop the hammer. They're getting ready for martial law in October. I'm not saying that's coming. That's in the news where the DHS is preparing for civil unrest in the election, collapse. Um, <laughs> Colonel Six had given me his real name and I looked up who he was. Unless the person on the other end of the phone who gave me a lot of good info uh, was somebody impersonating a African-American uh, Marine Corps colonel um, who had just gotten out of the service a few months before he gave us a lot of info. His site has not been updated since June. I'm trying to dig up his real name. It's somewhere here in our notes. We called his cell phone. It's been disconnected. He'd been on as a guest. He gave us nothing but good information. He told us uh, when certain generals were going to be gone, that scandals were coming up, all sorts of stuff. And um, if he if he did get commit suicide, that's very suspicious. Uh, now, for this segment and the next, and then Larry Pratt is going to be joining us. I'll continue with your calls. We're joined by Ted Anderson. He hasn't been on with us in months. Here's CNBC.com. Gold to hit 2000 by year end on more Fed easing. Merrill Lynch's top analysts are saying that's CNBC. Here's Financial Times of London. Big investors bet Fed will embark on QE3. Well, we thought that would happen last year. Uh, QE3 launch unlikely to make waves. That's another Financial Times of London. Gold hovers around 1,620 per ounce as they wait for central banks. Now, remember when it was a lot when gold was 600 an ounce? It was a lot when it was 300. It was a lot when it was 1,000, 1,500. Went up to 2,000. 
They've been artificially driving it down. I've used that time to buy some more bullion and more silver uh, because I've got it as a backup for, you know, total devaluation, you name it. But I wanted to get Ted Anderson on because generally things start back up in the fall and he's also got some specials linked up at Infowars.com where you can, uh, well, you can get some free books and things like that. But I wanted to bring Ted on. Ted, what's going on in the gold market right now and the manipulation? And it looks like more of the rumblings leaning towards QE3 in the late fall, early winter, or uh, what's your uh, what's your intel say? Well, that's what I'm seeing too, QE3. That's the big word right now out on the street. And I'm reading the same stuff that you are. The Economic Times is reporting the same thing. As a matter of fact, Briefwire is saying that gold will hit over $2,000 an ounce this year and somewhere hit in somewhere around $1,900 an ounce. We, we are sitting down at 16 20 90 but seen a low, at 1550. One of the reasons why I haven't come up on the air with you is because of the fact that we had to find a bottom here. We had such a huge rush from that $600 figure all the way up to 15, all the way up to $1,900 an ounce. And, uh, and then we had to see some kind of a correction. Uh, the banks were trying to pull things back together again. But you know, Alex, we have the Patriot Act, we have TARP, we've had bailouts for banks that were too big to fail, real ID. Uh, most of the politicians have little clue about the Fed and what hard money means. And now we're looking at the printing press again. Yeah, indeed, they're calling for QE3. Banks like Goldman Sachs, HSBC is in trouble. I mean, it's just it, everything is kind of falling apart here at the end of the year. And it's not surprising. July, this is the last day of July. We're, this is the second to the last day of July. We're coming into August. Things move in the fall in gold with the exception of when George Bush was leaving office in 2008 and telling everybody that there's going to be martial law if we don't have TARP passed. And that, that forced us into what I would call QE1. And then it just kept on building up from there. I agree. That's, of course, yeah, why yeah, you've yeah. seen oil prices and gold and yeah. silver and everything shoot up in price. Right now, silver's at 28.17, up 28 cents here today. It's been down as low as 26 cents. 1550 gold now we're at 162190 the 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 economy is falling apart and the politicians still think no, I hear that you. the best answer for economic problems is to resort back to the printing press this is why we need hard currency because the politicians they wouldn't even have that option but we don't have it and the fed is talking about qe3 they're doing everything they can to say that it's not going to happen but they know it has to happen we have way too much debt in this country we are loaded up to the gills the economy can't afford to support it and the only answer to them is to start you're right the printing Ted, press uh... and push more money out into the system and what uh, all right, Larry Pratt is coming up to break down what I see as the biggest concerted assault in the Second Amendment ever, bipartisan, by uh, globalist front men posing as Democrats and Republicans. Ted Anderson, I wanted to get him on earlier in the article, but I got behind uh, earlier in the uh, broadcast. Um, but uh, continuing with these articles I was mentioning, you know, Merrill Lynch is saying $2,000 gold by the end of the year. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the case, but t Ted, my point is, I believe, for myself personally, now is a good time to get into gold and silver. And in my experience, and working with you for almost 15 years, you were a sponsor 15 years ago. You started Genesis, what, 14 years ago or more. Uh, you've got the best deals on gold, bullion, silver, you name it. But you also have the, the numismatics and collectibles, really good deals on that. You have a special offer you're still running, but it ends in just uh, a couple weeks because uh, we're going to be out of the book. Big Brother and the American Dream, uh, you get two silver dollars and a great book and a powerful film about the banksters for $63. And I can tell you right now, Ted's losing money on that deal, but it's, it's a uh, promotional uh, offer. What do they call that? A loss leader. So you can click on the banner at the top of Infowars.com on the right-hand side or give Midas Resources a call at 800-686-2237. 800 686 Two two three seven. But Ted, uh, what are some of the other specials that Midas Resources is running? Because uh, I mean, the smart money, at least in my mind, is on that it's going to go up quite a bit in the fall. Now is a great time. It looks like this is well, it's it's hit its bottom, gone up a little bit. I mean, I think now is a good time to get into gold and silver. 
It sure is. I mean, one of the great buys that I have right now are the Walking Liberty halves at sixteen eighty three. Those are at sixteen dollars a piece here just six months ago. Um, that book and silver dollar offer sixty three bucks for two silver dollars. I mean, you got to remember, silver's at twenty eight dollars and seventeen cents. There's nobody in the planet that is offering two silver dollars and a and a ten dollar book and a ten dollar video for sixty three bucks. You yeah, can't yeah, by that, that book retails for nineteen. A little bit of silver at a low uh, flat price, and that way you can get educated and involved in the gold and silver market. Twenty dollar liberties. You uh, you had uh, Lindsey. Uh, Lindsey Williams on, uh, and he's talking about gold confiscation. If you want to stay away from that, the $20 Liberties make sense right now. They're at 1989. Uh, there's just a long bunch of gold and silver bullion and, and numismatic or semi-numismatic type notice. coins that you can be getting into at this time. And the prices are, are summer prices. Rather than waiting till October when everything is hitting the fan, do it now. Because now is the time to get in while the prices are low. You're at sixteen twenty one ninety. Gold has already gone up sixty to seventy dollars an ounce just within the last two or three weeks. You know that's the that's the QE two, the QE three thing that's coming up that all the market is nervous about, and it's reality. With the unemployment, everything going like it is, you know it, we're going to have more stimulus. All right, Ted's joining us via Skype uh, and. I want to do a whole interview with you in the next few weeks to really break down a forecast, maybe get some other forecasters on. I haven't even had you on since Bob Chapman passed. Uh, you want to say uh, any comments about Bob Chapman, who used to join us every Friday? Yeah, Bob Chapman was a great friend and, uh, and really had a good grip on what was going on economically. Uh, Bob Chapman convinced people to get out of the real estate market. I don't think there was anybody else calling for that. And that market just took a huge tank. Uh, getting out of the stock market and so on and so forth, putting people into gold and silver at three to six hundred dollars an ounce, uh, and uh, just a good, straightforward, honest man. It's just a shame to have lost him. That's for sure. But he is out of the reach of the globalist now with his heavenly father. All right, eight hundred six eight six two two three seven. Ted Anderson, Midas Resources, the name, the trusted name in precious metals, who I use, who I work with. We get offers every day for other sponsors beating down our door. Some of them, I'm sure, are great, but we only work with Ted Anderson. There's some good local places in different areas of the country as well, but nationally, 800-686-2237 or at InfoWars.com. Click on the banner there at the right-hand corner. Two silver dollars, a book, and a powerful video, $63. Ted's losing about 20 bucks on that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Larry Pratt, who came on the InfoWars Nightly News last Friday and agreed that if the criminal elements of the government would stage Fast and Furious that killed hundreds conservatively, thousands probably, that uh, they would stage the theater event. And boy, that story just gets crazier and crazier. But I wanted to get Larry Pratt on to discuss this latest news article that has come out. Uh, Time Magazine, How Guns Won, Why Americans Have Turned Against Gun Control. And yes, the polls show that we are politically winning. And, and we do have Larry Pratt. He's on with us via Skype. We're just trying to get uh, audio right now. And in about two minutes, just go to telephone. Like I said, just, we'll end it here and just go to phone. I, I, you know, I'd rather just get Larry on than just have a, you know 20 people work on it and not, it never happen. Uh, so this is a big issue here because now you've got the major Republican leadership uh, coming out. Bill Crystal, Michael Savage, uh, Rupert Murdoch, you name it, saying, look, you shouldn't be able to have a semi-automatic weapon. Now, now, why are they doing that right as the polls completely start shifting and every time there's a mass shooting, people want more guns? Because they get it. The government can't and won't protect you. They can come confiscate your gun like Katrina. And so the system is really showing us that they're in a very, very serious panic mode right now. And this is a big deal because they're very dangerous. Uh, also, uh, it's not getting any attention at any level 
that they have introduced a writer on a bill that I checked the progress of. It's getting co-sponsors. They tried to pass it quite a few times the last couple of years. They're close to passing it now. Democrat senators offer gun control amendment for cybersecurity bill. The headline should be, Democrats propose banning the possession of, a, of high capacity mags, which is over 10. And the way I read the bill, they could even do something like say, well, guns that can accept the magazines uh, can't have this. So we'll uh, get Larry, Larry Pretz take on that uh, as soon as we get him on the regular telephone. Because that is my wishes, to, to not just go with this Skype problem and, and stick with that. I, I want to switch. When three minutes of Skype not working, I want to go to alternate phone number back up in these interviews, and then this won't happen. Because Skype, Skype is a great thing. So just message him on the thing. I'm not trying to direct people live on air, but if I direct it, it'll you know, kind of just happen. Because we have a tendency, and we all do this, to have to face a problem and kind of stick with that problem and then just... Just keep going with that problem instead of going around it. And that, that's always my model. Just go around something if there's an issue because I'm chomping at the bit here to find out what Larry Pratt thinks about since he was on Friday, all these incredible developments uh, that have been unfolding. All righty then. Uh, also, uh, this is a, if you cut to the wide shot for people watching on prisonplanet.tv, uh, we are listener supported. And when you purchase books and videos uh, and uh, high-quality pro-pure water filters with 10% discounts with the promo code WATER, you fund this true, hardcore, pro-liberty, pro-America, pro-freedom system in the face of the globalist. And you, uh, you know, this T-shirt that uh, one of our graphics people designed, I think it was Cade, is so popular. It is, it is Hunter Orange with an Infowars.com and the Gadsden Snake on a classic camouflage shirt. And this is our best seller right now, along with the live free or die. I, I saw somebody comment on the website today. They said, live free or die trying. I like that. I, that explains what, what we're doing here, what we're shooting for, what's happening. So again, uh, please visit infowarshop.com. Or call 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139, and uh, they can uh, take your order right here at the office. Or write to us at, uh, what is that shirt, 1995? Write to us at P.O. Box 19549, Austin, Texas, 78760. And I guess I'll go to some calls while we're waiting for Larry. Oh, 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 we... We now have him, and we have him via, I guess, telephone. Uh, Larry Pratt, thank you for uh, getting on with us here today. Uh, what do you make of the announcement that how guns Oops, won? Just went dark. Hello. Yeah, I think I think Hello? we're having some technical stuff today. Ted couldn't hear me either. Yeah, let's let's put him back on hold. I don't think he can hear us. So something went on when the power went off today, guys. Ted Anderson couldn't hear me either. Okay, let's let's go let's let's go back now to Larry Pratt here, broadcasting worldwide, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Larry Pratt, head of Gun Owners of America. Uh, good to have you here with us today. Uh, I know you're a man who is reserved, and you you know you run the only no compromise Second Amendment group uh, out there that's in Washington. The NRA is kind of being drugged, kicking and screaming by you and others into being more proactive for the Second Amendment, as you point out. Uh, they, they were set up, the NRA, at the end of the Civil War to teach Northerners how to shoot as an auxiliary of the federal government. So that's why they've always had such a cozy relationship now with those that occupy the federal government. But uh, we have uh, Joe Klein saying, how guns won, why Americans have turned against gun control. And then they go on to basically say how horrible it is. But suddenly, Mr. Crystal, Mr. S Michael Savage, uh, Scalia has come out and said, oh, we could restrict you know, if something's scary which isn't actually true. Uh, we've seen um, uh, the, the head of News Corp, Rupert Murdoch, say you don't need semi-automatic. Since when did Fox News turn into the Michael Moore, Chucky e. Schumer, uh, Mayor Bloomberg channel? Um, since when did this happen, Mr. Pratt? 
Well, actually, all along, the Fox News has been, I would say they're closer to what they claim to be fair and balanced than a conservative network. There are some conservatives on there. The one that's most constitutional is Judge Napolitano, and uh, he doesn't have his own show any longer. They bring him in as a uh, contributing legal analyst, which is great because he's r really super at that. But um, they're conservative without necessarily checking out the Constitution, and that's where a lot of folks run into trouble. They're not at liberty to want the government to do more than the, we the people have allowed the government to do, and we, uh, I think even on the conservative side, fall into the mindset that uh, Barack Obama clearly has when he was talking to a Republican delegation at the White House. He reminded them that, well, I won, as if that means he can do anything he wants, and uh, that's not exactly right. But... All of these people have to know that their entire base hates their guts now when Mr. Crystal comes out and says, we can ban all the semi-autos. I mean, there's clearly a concerted effort here when the Republican leadership is begging the Democrats to bring forward restrictions. I think they're going to pay for that at the ballot box. There are still primaries left this year and some Republican heads could roll if they're willing to put themselves on that block. Uh, and the voters have already shown that they're willing to take out Republicans. Uh, incumbents have lost, uh, and in open primaries, uh, people that might have had an easy time getting elected because of their prominence in other positions have lost in these primaries. The with uh, maybe a couple of exceptions at the federal level, the victories have been going to Tea Party type candidates, um, and, and that certainly includes pro Second Amendment candidates. So they can talk like that at their own peril, and it shows me that they don't yet understand that guns is the third rail of American politics. You touch it at your own peril. Uh, be advised, uh, because you may come back in a political body bag. Larry Pratt, head of Gun Owners of America, is our guest. Uh, Larry, uh, you know, we've talked about the poll numbers showing that in the 60s and 70s, it was maybe 55% pro-gun, the other 45 buying into the trendiness of the nanny state. I see numbers of over 70% now being pro-Second Amendment. People get it now that the government can't and won't protect you. Right. And so there's a major shift happening. What do you make of the anti-gunners now admitting this but saying they're going to circle the wagons and come after us that much harder. Well, it's uh, kind of what you expect from a fanatic. A fanatic is defined as someone who tries something and fails and redoubles their effort doing the same thing time and again. And the uh, the fact is, uh, they they really don't get it. I I would I did a debate in Spanish on CNN Español, and uh, this thing went on for an hour and. When I would lay out some of the simple facts, like from 1991 until the present, the U.S. murder rate has fallen by 50 percent from around uh, eight to around four and per 100,000. And that doesn't uh, bode well for them because some 40 million guns were transacted in that period of time. Uh, America is armed to the teeth, and yet the murder rate is substantially declining. And because there's 12 uh, uh, people that tragically lost their lives as much as anything because they didn't have a gun and nobody else did in the theater, we're supposed to rush into the gun control bag and say, you got us? <laughs> I don't think well, so. Well, did you notice gun sales doubled the week after that happened? Already record numbers that doubled that. And then I saw polls where there was people were even more pro-gun after the shooting. That's what's freaking them out is they stage fast and furious. I believe they stage this. All the signs are there. And people really get that now and go, no, I want a gun because there's a crazy Ronald McDonald murderer, you know, out there, uh, you know, if that's even true. That is the message to take away. And that's what I was telling these left wing media types in the frenzy following the, the shooting. I said, what, what you're doing is predictable. But let me tell you, I will predict that this has actually shifted opinion more in 
the favor of gun owners of America and gun owners generally. Uh, this is something where the American people realize, as you said, Alex, the police can't be there to protect us. Uh, it's not their job. They don't have the numbers. It's just not going to happen. And uh, the, the murderer in Aurora uh, didn't choose uh, the police station to start gunning people down. He went in through a door. Uh, well, he, he entered the front door first, bought a ticket, and then uh, went outside to get his guns uh, during the showing of the of the film. Um, he, uh, he walked right by a no-gun sign. Exactly. They're <laughs> talking about putting metal detectors in and having TSA style everywhere. All that means is that when a shooter shows up at the mall or the theater, they know they've got disarmed people that they can feed on. Absolutely, because he could go uh, and do exactly what he did in the theater in Aurora, having gone through a metal detector. Wouldn't have made a hill of beans a difference. And I'll tell you what would happen if they put up metal directors at uh, movie theaters. Netflix would say, yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> well, you're right. But, but, I mean, what do you expect them to do now? I mean, they're certainly circling the wagons when suddenly all these re Republicans come out and sound like Bill Clinton or, or uh, people like uh, Michael Moore. I, I mean, uh, they are certainly desperate. What do you expect them to do now that they finally realize that everyone does the opposite of what they say, that everyone hates them, America's waking up. I mean, I'm not just hyping that. No. Are, are you seeing the same thing? Absolutely. I was telling them that they were losing the propaganda battle. Uh, it, it is, and, and actually, when I was on CNN Espanol, and I was telling them nothing is going to happen because the American people are so against your gun grabbing that if you do anything, you're going to pay a price this November. And they said, yeah, that's right. We acknowledge that. But it's just really so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, you've got this domesticated America who grew up with parents that didn't teach them about guns, who literally, you know, men lay down while their wife gets raped. It's, it's that minority of weirdos who want to be cowards and weak, who look at us who are upstanding, armed, successful. I mean, we're not socialists. They are. I mean, it's just on every front. These are screwed up, dumb people. And, and, and look, we're tired of being lectured by them. It's over. They are losing momentum. Amen, brother. That is exactly what's happening, and it does freak them out. Uh, I, I have not enjoyed anything more than dealing with the BBC or CNN or public broadcasting. Or this is an occasional commercial liberal doesn't have much of an audience. I was probably talking to myself, but they, they just don't know what to say or do other than can't we just give peace a chance? <laughs> Meanwhile, though, meanwhile, they, the, the federal government is arming 450 million hollow points, armored uh, pillboxes, checkpoints, drones, armed drones. Hey, th why can the government be arming to the teeth, but we're not supposed to be armed? You know, it almost strikes me that they're trying to preempt the market. If they buy that many, then the domestic manufacturers may really be very strapped. And, in fact, ammunition is quite pricey. Now... Uh, expanding on this, uh, you were on the show Friday. Can you elaborate on uh, the fact that you're saying we have to look at this as possibly being a false flag? I, I, I mean, even at the level of there's the Air Force psychiatrist reprimanded for dangerous drugs to people. Uh, there is this dossier he supposedly sent him. What he was going to do, nothing was done. I mean, all the telltale signs. We've seen weird photoshops now of his gas mask at the scene. I mean, this whole thing looks shut up. Yeah, uh, after Fast and Furious, and, and you know me, I'm, I'm not one inclined to uh, go with a conspiracy theory, but there really was a conspiracy in Fast and Furious, and the government not only conspired, they conspired to commit mass murder. Well, if they would do that, then indeed, how can we say that it's impossible that this guy wasn't prompted, goaded, some way led into, cooperated with some kind of a government uh, agent that was there to uh, encourage him, maybe open the theater door? For, who knows? Um, the, the fact of the matter is, if the government is investigating this, 
we're probably never going to find out. Once the FBI took this thing over, which just outrages me, they have no law enforcement authority constitutionally, and we're letting them conduct the investigation? The, the, the folks from Waco, the folks from Ruby Ridge, the folks from other disasters, we're letting them investigate this? Whew. Very frightening. Uh, what do you make... Why do you think, because they're always so deceptive, why would they come out in Time Magazine and announce they've lost? I mean, what, what is the point of that? Because then you read the article and they say, hey, don't worry, we'll still get their guns. But I mean, I mean is this like a mayday emergency that you know, the, the slaves have woken up? What are we going to do? I think it means they're desperate to get the president reelected because even he is somewhat restrained somewhat uh, right now because of the election contest and as far as I can tell right now he's going to lose and lose big but if he were to get reelected oh buddy it would be go for the gold uh, that would be just the end of the country certainly the end of the second amendment uh, and I think what may have them so desperate is they can see that we hate them as you were saying they not only on the second amendment issue but on so many other issues the president has been the educator in chief I don't think most people had a clue that there was a chance that we were going socialist in this country but once we elected a socialist as president <laughs> and and he is so tone deaf and actually rather incompetent as uh, uh, the author of the amateur argues in his uh, book ed klein uh, this guy really isn't that bright he makes the same mistake twice. He doesn't seem to uh, pay attention even to his own polling. Uh, the fact that, well, start with, with Obamacare. Uh, the polls have s said from the get-go that it was enormously unpopular, and people were really concerned about jobs. So uh, what did he do? Well, if it had been Bill Clinton, he probably would have worked both tracks, but certainly he would have at least faked it like he was uh, doing something about jobs. But this guy couldn't be bothered. That's about because jobs. they want to destroy this country. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, they, they admit it. They want a post-industrial country, as the UN and Maury Strong have said. They want to wreck it so they can make us go on welfare under their control. In closing, Larry Pratt of gunowners.org, uh, you know, the watchdog up there on Capitol Hill with your great organization and all your Thank members you. and the news alerts that are invaluable. People should visit it and sign up for the free news alerts right now. Thank you. That's, uh, it, we appreciate that. I see a false flag in the making because I know they're telling police and military to get ready for gun confiscation. I've got an army manuals where they're training for it. They're telling them something's coming in October. I'm not saying that's going to happen. The point is they're telling them it's coming. Right. And... If they try gun confiscation or if they try to restrict, you will get resistance and that could start a civil war. Uh, they might do it while they start a new war or something, thinking that we would patriotically get in line. Are you worried about them setting off a new war to get us in line for gun confiscation uh, or trying to march the cops off to take the guns and then a war will start? I, I can see them doing something that they think might uh, bring them our favor, our support. Uh, so, oh, yes, save us from ourselves sort of thing. But uh, honestly, I, 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 while I, I have been concerned about that, and we still should be looking out uh, in case they actually do try something, I think now there is such a revulsion against this regime that if they tried something like that, it would just make us angrier and we would spit in their face with a loaded gun. By the way, I agree with you. There is true revulsion now for big government across the board and it's only intensifying. See, we've been taught by these modern churches and stuff that we're all gonna lose and the devil's gonna take over. Folks, we don't know where we are in God's plan. We just have to do justice, may the heavens fall. And I'm telling you, I think we can beat these people and take America back. That's why the old line Republicans are panicking, saying, wait, gun control's good, because they understand we're getting ready to sweep them all away. That's right. They, uh, they will have done it to themselves. They're as tone deaf as is the president. And uh, we've, it's going to be a, probably a two, three election process. Uh, Senate elections may not uh, avail us an opportunity in, uh, for a few years uh, for all of these guys, but we're making progress. I think we're likely to expand the majority in the House that the we may actually get a conservative majority in the Republican caucus. Well, what's happening is the American people are really turning against the system. Absolutely. They, they know the system is not working for them. And so, okay, system, 
uh, we're, we're going to come and chop you apart. That's right. Absolutely. The sleeping giant is rising. Larry Pratt, thank you so much for your courage. God bless you. Thank you for what you're doing with your microphone, my friend. Thank you. All right. We'll be back with more Defense of the Republic and Liberty breaking news. Stay with us. I told you this for about six years because they have these big globalist consortium meetings and it's all public that the new software, the operating systems, they've all got internet IDs embedded in them, not just your IP address. And the whole goal of this is when they say in the future you're not a good globalist, you're just going to be banned from the internet. You're going to be banned from travel. You're going to be banned from buying and shelling. And then you'll be hunted down and killed, uh, taken to a re-education center and killed. And by the way, that's in all the Army documents. That's public. I mean, I, I know that sounds crazy. Reality's crazy. You ever studied other countries? What's happening here has happened everywhere over and over again, over and over again. Even the supposed freest countries like England and France in the past, not free now. And it's here. Uh, this is new at Infowars.com. We've got to send this to Drudge. This is big news. NSA wants easy pass control for the Internet. Now imagine the National Security Agency is here telling us what, what, what we will do as Americans, openly spying on us. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's incredible because they've learned it. They just get on a stage and announce the crimes. It's like it's okay. Maybe they should have Sandusky to the meeting and, you know, they could have him rape a child on stage or something and that'll be okay because they did it on stage, you know. By the way, they've hired the head of Penn State to work for Homeland Security now in a secret position. Of course, joining the club, uh, General Keith Alexander, the NSA boss who wants the government to centralize the Internet and force users to use a system analogous to EasyPass, a transponder. And he says, when you go down the highway and you go down the EasyPass lane, what you're doing is sending a code. That system is not looking in your car, reading your email or intercepting anything. It's just getting that code. Oh, yeah, really? So you can set people up with it and track where you went and then ban you from getting on the web. That's the whole point, you liar. But you're dealing with your enemy, the American people. You work for the bankers. You're, you're an occupation general, a collaborator. In other words, the government should vet all uses with a checkpoint. All you need to pass is the fact of a signature, an IP address in real time, and we can take it from there. Yeah, we know you're already taking it from there, bud. <laughs> the NSA whistleblowers and more of them came out just last month. Everything's tracked in real time. So I'll say it right now. Proprietary software, microprocessor breakthrough, works 20 times faster than the new programs that... I, I, I mean, I can just start putting a bunch of gibberish about patents and stuff out on there. That's what they really care about. They're stealing everything and shipping it offshore. Their job is to make sure America falls. Literally, this government is a pack of scum, a pack of New World Order trying to drown this nation, trying to break us, trying to bring us down. I mean, I'll just say it. Uh, I mean, people think you do keywords like uh, atomic bomb New York. Uh uh, that isn't what gets their computers going. They already know where all those are at, they run those. Al Qaeda operative caught by New York police with CIA package and detonator. Ooh, that'll really get bing bonged today by them. I mean, I could just sit here. We should all just start getting on the phones, just doing it 24-7. Going, we know you're terrorists. We know you're murderers. We know you're killers. We know you hate this country. You're like, man, you're really angry. Yeah, I'm angry. This is all illegal. It's a takeover. I've had enough. Hatred of these people will bring America back. Dis saying, you're criminals. We know what you're doing. Instead of them just like, okay, we spy on you illegally. What you gonna do about it? We've got to call them out. We got to get in their face. We got to stop just putting up with all this. We've got to have an equal response to what they're doing. Not just, oh, yeah, yeah, they secretly disappear people and kill them now. Oh, we better do what they say. That way leads slavery. That way leads bondage. We're going to go to Julio Rosseo here in just a moment. But that article is just off the charts because they're now announcing it. Going to Julio Rosseo here in a moment. Here's another one. More law enforcement agencies turning to pre-crime policing. Yeah, run by uh, the you know, former Sandusky boss. Literally, that's where they... <laughs> There's all these articles where they're hiring all these pedophiles in the schools and everything. I mean, we're just... In a lot. They're coming. And soon they're going to have drones and robots, the pedophiles are. I mean, it's just... They're incredible cowards. Big Sis says 30,000 drones for law enforcement, public safety. Um, law experts warn of threat of reasonable suspicion. Yeah, in New York, there's an article I got here on the stack where they're like, 
We're spying on your license plates, your face, and other secret things. Well, we know what it is. It's just all, and imagine that mobster, Bloomberg, who says you can't have sugar, can't have cigarettes, can't have water. Now he wants to make mothers breastfeed because there's been a PR backlash against him. Yeah, you should be breastfeeding. Yeah, formula is abusive to children. The mainline stuff is over 70% corn syrup. I've, I've broken it down on air. It'll be part sugar, part corn. It's over 70. I mean, it's just frying children. But, but now Bloomberg comes out and says that. It isn't your place, okay? The nanny state kills us and then comes in and tries to save us. It's unbelievable. All right, I'm ranting here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what they're going to do is the model is going to be the Google NSA model, where if you have a YouTube channel now and they claim you've been copyrighted a few times, they're, they're tagging it to your cell phone, your email, and your database, and people now that are getting banned from YouTube can never get back on, no matter how many IP addresses, how many phone numbers, how many logins, unless they get somebody else to do it. But in the future, somebody else won't set up an account for you because they'll lose it. It's like the IRS says you won't travel outside the country if you haven't paid the Federal Reserve all your money. No judge, no jury. We are unleashing hell on ourselves, and it's time to turn back here. It's time to get nasty about this. And by nasty, I mean look at how nasty this is and disgusting. Really get angry at ourselves for letting it get this far. Let me tell you, I'm not strutting around here at the office feeling like I'm Mr. Mr. Tough Guy. I feel pathetic. I feel weak. I know how weak I am compared to my ancestors. I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I know how desperate the situation is. Okay? This is not, I'm not up here just yelling and screaming at everybody. We're in a lot of trouble here, okay? A lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. A lot. They're two inches from going around and starting to just snatch and grab people. They put that stuff on the books because they plan to use it. And they do plan on trying to start a civil war in this country. But because our forebearers were smart, smart as the world ever saw, they put liberty bombs in there that have been ticking and waiting till they were needed. It's like guardians or something. To use a Thor analogy, and they're guarding the, uh, you know, guarding the, you know, the throne room, all the weapon systems. And when you step in there, it turns on. And that's what it is. That sleeping giant is awakening. The guardian is awakening. You are that guardian. Your whole life, your whole future, your life isn't about just partying and all that. That's why you're not fulfilled. Because if you just party all day long and you're not balanced, you're not fulfilled because hedonism will not fulfill you. When we, when we make a special production video that's 10 minutes long and has all the facts, and I know it just totally proves everything we're saying, and I know it's going to reach millions of people, there is an intense feeling of total satisfaction that we are helping people and we are unlocking minds and we are helping put more energy into the collective hand, pulling a knife across the carotid arteries of the New World Order. And just collectively, the globalists can feel the spirit of liberty with that knife and they're going, oh, they're going, and they're like, you can't win, you have no power. We're not listening to that anymore. We're collectively pulling and we're gonna pull right through till that whole head comes off, Medusa. You understand that? Your lies are going to be decapitated. The info war is here. And the collective force is just, yeah, you understand that? Just, yeah, we are not your slaves, you murdering maggots. I understand their weaponized system, how they're brain damaging kids. Let me tell you, I'm in a Walgreens or a CVS. I was in one last night when they were to buy a pad of paper. And I saw on every corner, Little bottles of water fluoridated for kids with way above what's in the tap water to brain damage them. And I almost just grabbed one and busted it on the floor. That's a normal response to weaponized chemicals to hurt little kids when the, even the American Medical Association was forced to say people under five shouldn't ingest any fluoride. They've had to cut it back and say, don't put it in the water. And I've got a Harvard study with over a dozen studies that it's brain damaging kids. And they say it threatens our whole humanity. Yeah, no kidding, that's the plan. And if you're not outraged by that, something's wrong with you. If you walked in your house one night at 2 a.m. to get a glass of orange juice, and you caught somebody in there putting something in the, in the orange juice of the milk, and you tackled them, and you had your gun or whatever, and got the thing away from them, and it had skull and crossbones on it marked cyanide, you'd be mightily angry, wouldn't you? See, this is a normal response, folks. If you don't feel like this about tyranny, 
you've had that switch turned off in you. This is normal. This is normal for our species. This is why we're top of the food chain, folks, because we're not putting up with anything. You understand that? Instead, we're the opposite, putting up with anything by a bunch of scum, the lowest of our species. I will not put up with it anymore. I will not, my one time with consciousness on this plane of existence, sit here and go along with this. And that ain't special, folks. You got to stop thinking of what I do as special. You have got to realize it's normal. This is normal. This is normal. I'm going to shut up now and go to Julio, who is a reporter. He's done reporting for Infowars.com. He's done it for We Are Change. We have video of this. If you're a radio listener, I'm going to have it reposted at Infowars.com right now as one of the top tiles. And uh, Julio, tell folks your story because we have the video you shot that got national attention. Uh, of the TSA at the bus terminals and train stations searching people, setting up checkpoints, grope points. They also tried to tell uh, the George for Title channel out in L.A. he couldn't film or, or that they might ask him if he's a terrorist, but he still got the footage. Uh, so this is happening everywhere. Right on time, they're rolling out. And then they came and found you days later, and you have tape of that, and you stood your ground saying you could be a terrorist for taping them. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I wasn't there because I just can't. I just say, you listen here, you scum. Don't try to intimidate me. Move to North Korea. I'll videotape you run your checkpoint anytime you want. What you going to do, put me on no fly list? What are you, a felon or something? I bet you're a felon. Go ahead and do something illegal, punk. I am so sick of these people. I don't care anymore. Julio, tell us what happened to you. Well, Alex, it's a pleasure. I've called so many times as a, as a caller. It's an honor to be on as a guest. Uh -oh, excuse me, I'm a little raspy right now. Uh, back on July 5th, Day after Independence Day, I'm getting set to see the band Dumfries McGee. I take the train into Union Station. I'm from the suburbs of Chicago, and I was I was shocked. I saw TSA agents in their full uniform, and you know, being an independent reporter, it was just in instinctive to take out my cell phone and to start filming and just to see what they were doing. I was kind of in a hurry, but it was, you know, by the grace of God, perfect timing. I got my camera out, and here comes TSA getting set to do the checkpoint. And as you saw in that first video, TSA invades Chicago's Union Station. I mean, literally perfect timing, me filming and the TSA setting their checkpoints. Now, last Wednesday, July 18th, I go back to Union Station uh, to meet with Mike Murphy of why in the world are they spraying, and I see TSA agents again, and I just thought from two weeks ago that, oh, you know, TSA's just here, uh, you know, maybe just for the Independence Day weekend, and, and, and they're going to be gone. Looks like they're they're permanently staying at Union Station, and for folks that don't know, no, 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 they got billions of funding. They sent the kits out nationwide. They're rolling out nationwide, and then next year they're rolling out into every town. They're going right. to be everywhere. They're going to grope your wife. They're criminals. They love it. Chicago is the third largest media market in the country, followed by New York and L.A. One and two, and. If it wasn't for my video, people around the Chicagoland area or your listeners or anyone throughout the world wouldn't have known that TSA is in Chicago's union. Station. And they keep saying, oh, it's terrorism if you don't tell us you're coming, as if you're not media. So so tell people what happened. You shot video, then, right. they, then they find you weeks later. Right. They find, I, I went to the Metro, it's like a, a bar, bar and grill type thing at Union Station, and that's where TSA agents were eating lunch. So I wanted to do a film. Our taxpayer dollars is giving TSA lunch at Union Station. And then while I'm sitting, I'm trying to be discreet. An Amtrak police officer comes up to me and he says, hey, I, you know, as you saw in the video, you know, you're the one that filmed us uh, last week. You put it on YouTube. And I tried to act dumb at first. Like, what are you talking about? I didn't film anything. But then I said, so what's the problem? What if I filmed? TSA and, and the video goes on. He goes on to say, you know, we don't have a right to film TSA. It could be, uh, you know, because on my video on July 5th, I, I gave the day, the time, where I was at, where, you, where TSA was being. Well, yeah, you're the enemy. You're the American people. You're not allowed to film gods while right. they violate and, people's Fourth Amendment and take over criminally. And because I did that, I gave terrorists an opportunity to, to know where they were. And remember, Alex, before NATO, I, I was with Lou Kradowski in downtown Chicago. An undercover officer said, if you put this picture on YouTube, I could get shot by a terrorist. Yeah, so oh, you mean the, the terrorists they're putting in Libya and Syria and the underwear bomber they got on the plane? That's why we've got to overturn their fake terror. Their bosses staged the terror. It's totally made up. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. 
no, don't worry, Alex. They, I mean, everyone should be upset by this. Everyone should be, you know, should be angry that our taxpayer dollars is funding this. And, uh, you know, sooner or later, we're going to see the body scanners. We're going to see the full groping at the train stations. And, and this Amtrak police officer kept saying, you know, I don't have a right to show what TSA is doing. Uh, he admitted that the government sent them my video, and they were very upset by that. And by the way, you taped all that. Have you gotten any word since you put that out? We're going to play some of it when we come back. I have not. I, I haven't been to Union Station in a week. And I usually go, again, I'm from the suburbs. I don't have a car, so I'm an independent journalist. I take the train into the city for some of that. No, no, no. It's a Nazi political checkpoint of commissars in their outside color of law telling you you can't film in a public commons. They're totally full of bull. It's like the cops that shot the guy in handcuffs in San Francisco and confiscated all the cameras and then got caught because one person didn't turn it over. I mean, look, they, look, you live in a state, though, where they try to indict you for filming them. I mean, it doesn't matter how many times it gets overthrown. They're a mafia government. So how did it end as they were trying to convert Chicago fully to North Korea? How, how's it going to end, you ask? No, I mean, I mean, how did it end as they sit there trying to threaten you? Oh, well, you know, it ended, uh, he, uh, I gave him my ID. And, you know, after that, I'm like, am, am I being detained? Am I being detained at all? If not, can I leave? Because I don't want to be here. Yeah, I wouldn't even, I would have gotten their IDs and said, look, criminals, you want to go put yeah. me in one of your little threat databases? The American people are putting you in the database. We know you're scum. I just can't and help it. And I'm thankful that, you know, my, the Lord has given me a sense of calmness during these type of events where I, I didn't overreact or I didn't, you know, raise my voice at all. I was just very calm and collective. Yeah, and in my experience, more and more, it gets their attention. Right. In, in, in the video, you can see that police officer was trying to be very intimidated, being a bully to me, you know, saying America nothing. And that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You say, but America has freedom. He goes, America nothing. Oh, yeah, like I thought this was America. He says America nothing. He says, oh, I'm a federal worker. And I go on to ask him, well, who funds the federal government, Mr. Amtrak police officer? Uh, the, the people fund that. So we, the people, have a right to know about what the TSA is doing. No one's reporting that the TSA is at train station. So I have a duty as an independent journalist and as a citizen of the U.S. to report this. Well, the, the Drudge Report has taken our reports and putting them out nationwide. He, he covered the one out of California. So the White House wants him shut down. Final comments from Julio Roseo from Chicago land. Here in a moment, I want to play some of the audio and video. Uh, first, he shows the video of the checkpoints. Then they come over and confront him. Two weeks later, the secret police saying, you could be a terrorist. You're like, well, it's America. I can film here in this mall area what you're doing. America, nothing. America, nothing. Well, yeah, that means your bank accounts, your private property, your kids. They're inoculating people now without authorization they just do what they want because they got guns <laughs> the bankers want it that way it's a lawless criminal takeover uh let's uh, go to this report here it is let's take a look all right we are changed is very happy to announce that we have a new correspondent in the midwest julio raseo of illinois now two weeks ago julio released a great video showing how tsa agents were setting up a checkpoint at the union train station in chicago we have tsa agents you know these aren't police officers they don't have a right to grope us they don't have a right to wear any badges they're not authorized law enforcement agents yet they have the audacity to do what they do at the airports they have the audacity to come to our train stations now the video was a big hit even with Amtrak police who worked within Union Station and they actually targeted and found Julio a week later when he was having dinner at Union Station came up to him and tried to intimidate and harass him but as a good journalist always does he took out the video camera and recorded everything that happened what's the law are you gonna listen or you gonna be kicked out of here and no. you gonna piss me off no, I don't want to piss you, you off I want to listen. To listen. That. I want to know what law. You still talk. I'm telling you to your face. Yes. Do not videotape us. If you come beyond that point. It's a, yeah, I'll, but I'm not beyond that if, point. I'm here at the restaurant. If you come like you did before. Right. Come beyond that point. You're going to jail, sir, because it could be used for terrorist activity. Right now, you're in violation because What's of. Terror? What, what kind of terrorist? Because. People know a time, the date, you gave an explanation about TSA. Yeah, but I'm a reporter. 
But I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm a reporter. Show me how I do a reporter. Did you approach us and say, hey, I want to take video? I don't. I didn't think I had to. I thought this no, was yeah, America. Oh, yeah. No, America, nothing. You know, you know, you know better. Where's your Where's your ID? My, I, I, I don't, I'm not doing ID. anything illegal. Yeah, I'm not yes, you are. You, I'm not going to give you my. ID. I'm not doing anything illegal. Bring out your ID. If, for what's the reason? Because right I'm now not, I'm not at the security checkpoint. I'm not. I'm not at the Amtrak. Wait a minute. I'm you did do it. We just didn't catch you. You got to remember something. You did. You did a violation. We didn't know we were going to go on YouTube. So like All right, that's video. enough. And the video didn't this is about political checkpoints that are going to be on every major street corner, and they're just going to pull you over, get you out, army truck. Re-education. I'm, I'm serious. The Army trains for this now. And the TSA are their little weirdo minders like the brown shirts. And uh, there's a bunch of other videos. There's other ones barking at him. We're going to get you. We're going to get you. Uh, Julio, I guess this is the new America. Uh, I told everybody it was coming. And next phase, they're going to be everywhere. And they are beginning the groping. Uh, by the way, I've seen video at bus and train stations where they even strip children. So there's nothing that's enough for them to keep us safe from the terrorists, yes. Notice how we're the terrorists now. Notice you were told, your journalism is terrorism, pal. Well, Alex, I wasn't going to release this video. And then and after the Colorado shooting and reading some documents, one from New Jersey's Fusion Center, the New Jersey Regional Operations Intelligence Center, is literally this report came out 14 hours after the shooting in Colorado, an uh, incident assessment, and they go on to admit here in page four, uh, you know, we could see more lone offender and homegrown extremists. And then in page five, they admit that now uh, uh, photography, photographing or videotaping facilities, security posts or exit and entry posts, uh, taking notes is now deemed suspicious activity. And again, this is right. Yeah, no, no. The they're taking Colorado. over America and planting the banker flag. They're, they're putting us under martial law. And they have your picture up there. I mean, you know, two weeks later, you're in a restaurant and they're going to let you know, you little American, you're a slave now, boy. In a quick five minutes with Julio Rosseo, then we're going to continue in the retransmission. But we're live right now. Look, I almost want to. I don't have the time to do it. I'm busy fighting the globalist here, but I almost want to go to Chicago and go in there and just let them beat me down, let them arrest me. I know it's a mafia town and stuff, but we've got to make a stand, sue them. Rob Dude just won a big lawsuit against Pittsburgh, and, and you know, uh, he got arrested for no reason trying to cover it. But I'm going to personally sue these people. I mean, we, I mean, these are just horrible creatures. Uh, and, I mean, because I mean, we only played a short clip of this. Um, but, I mean, as you said, you had to release this video now because they may just try to disappear you. I mean, I guess you're in this giant mall area of the train station, uh, and people are walking around with their video cameras, the government surveilling you, as if terrorists don't, don't want to know when there's a checkpoint. This is all just slave training. Uh, and so, uh, I, mean, I mean, they told you, too, on the tape. They said, we were sent here by the government. So th they are. They're political commissars. Very creepy. It is creepy. Here's a, a, a Homeland Security document from this month, July 2012, performance venues, indicators of violence and perspective measures, reiterates the New Jersey's Fusion Center documents and admits indicators of surveillance by potential attackers include persons using or carrying video camera observation equipment in a near facility for over an extended period of time, or a person using maps or photographs, and they admit performance venues include theaters, concert halls, auditoriums, amphitheaters, uh, uh, sports venues. So now we're going to see Homeland Security, TSA at these venues. So I felt the need to release this video and to point out, number one, that police, I, Amtrak police admitted to me, this wasn't on camera, but they admitted to me, they read these documents. I told them about uh, Homeland Security's uh, right-wing extremist document. The guy admitted to me, yeah, I dealt with sovereign citizens yesterday at Union Station. So police, Amtrak police, they all read these documents, and it, there's a roll call document, May 17th. 2012, Homeland Security and the FBI, warning of theater attacks. So, folks, if we do have a terrorist attack in this country, we need to fire every single intelligence person, uh, Napolitano, all of these before. Oh, no, they always get more power because they're the ones staging it. There exactly. Is and so I plead with, I plead with the people. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Pray to 
to the Lord above or, or just believe in love and go out and film the TSA. Go, don't be afraid. Go to Union Station. Folks, Station they have announced they are setting up checkpoints on highways. And I'm telling you, I don't go to the airport with my family because I can't have the pedos go after them. And most of them are admitted pedos, even convicted ones. But I've gotten to the point where, I mean, you know, you're not... I pull up, you got army trucks, a checkpoint. I mean, I'm sorry, perverts. You're not you're not groping us. I mean, they're just murdering criminals. I mean, it just that's just a bunch of criminal trash that took over. We know who you are, filth. You can read all your pipe dreams about terrorists. Your daddy, the big banks, runs all those terrorists, okay? We're done. Hey, Alex, yeah. Quickly, uh, when that Amtrak police officer told me that the government sent them my video, for a second I was kind of scared. Oh, no, they're monitoring me. But... After I saw it, thought it over, I thought it was, I, I felt very proud. I wear it as a band. No, it shows it. they're criminals. It shows the system's criminal. They're scared of you showing what they're doing because what exactly. they're doing is illegal and they want to phase it in. Look, we got it kicked out in Houston because they had one protest. We're going to kick this out everywhere. They no, don't no, want no. it known because they want to sneak up on us because they're like a thief in the night. And like I, like I said in one of these videos, you don't have to be a good-looking person with a sharp suit and a teleprompter to be a journalist. I'm 22 years old. I'll be 23 in a couple of weeks. And I felt, that, I felt, you know, I studied broadcasting in college. I know the tricks. I know the deception. And so I felt that it's my obligation. I'm not going to war, but I'll go to the info war. And I'm willing to do this for my family, for people. You've got to do world. it. It's not just that you're willing, you know, that you're willing, Julio. You have no future if you don't. God bless you. Everybody should join Julio. Everybody should go to that station. In fact, everybody should go there tomorrow uh, at noon central. We'll cover it live on the radio. Let's have 100 people. Now, let's give people a few days. Well, you know, they'll just pull out that day. That's how they work. They never want to give us a chance to show we're the boss. Everybody show up tomorrow at noon. Let's just do that. Everybody get, up, get there at noon, videotape them.